Hello, this is episode five of Moy TV. I'm Ezra Regan. Next to me is my co-host, Justin Samaro, and joining us is special guest, Ron Sanchez. Ron is founder of the TDS Mountain Bike Enduro that is happening April 26th through the 28th in Grass Valley, California. He's also project manager for GSC Construction, currently replacing the Trans Canyon water line in the Grand Canyon. Uh, how you doing, Ron? Thanks for coming down. Doing well, doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, right on, Ron. Thanks for coming, man. Um, yeah, so I guess so, a little... So you guys know each other. Yes. Uh, uh, we know each other through si uh, Jim Hart and Simon Olney, who are the owners of Old Republic Brewery. And um, yeah, you know them through Nevada City, or you're, you're out in Grass Valley. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so how did you end up meeting uh, old, the Old Republic guys, Jim so, and Simon? So WTB Wilderness Trail Bikes is, was the OG, one of the OG sponsors for TDS Enduro. Um, and at that time, it was literally, it was 18 guys the first year getting drunk in the woods, and we did four stages, and we were done by 2 o'clock. It was, it was kind of comical. It was just, it was, it was a, like a 50th birthday party for me. Uh-huh. So... Um, the WTB guy's office is right across the street from Old Republic, and so their connections were made, and we ended up hooking up with those guys, and uh, they would do our own label beer, TDS beer. Every uh, It was called Hey Buddy. Yep. Um, Buddy Newman, the guy that designed Goggle Man, um, as you can see on my hat. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, the label was sweet. <clears throat> it was the goggles, and then who was going? It was going down Vigilante? Going down Vigilante. Yep. And so Buddy Newman, who Casey went to high school with, my son Casey went to high school with him, uh -huh. um, he was a graphic designer for WTB, and, and Buddy was tragically killed in a car accident um, in 2019, I think it was. Oh, shit. Um, so that's where the Hey Buddy beer came from, and uh, just as a – an homage to Buddy, and, and um, we're super close to the Newman family. Um, Casey and, and Buddy race mountain bikes together all through high school, and, I mean, we've been to Whistler with them. We've been all over the western United States riding bikes with the Newman family. So that's where that came from, and, uh, um, you know, we, uh, we were kind of chuckling earlier. We were talking about the beer they made the one year. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, that was 2018 or 19? I can't. It was the year. I think it was it, 2000. It was the year we almost lost control. That was 19. <laughs> that, that was 19. 19. But but Old Republic also did a a beer for 2018. They did. Yeah. They did, they did it. I think three times. They okay. do. They do a special beer for the TDS with labels and everything. Oh man. So yeah. throughout the race, there was there'd be you know, I mean, so at, at this race. You, you you follow you know all the you know you follow the racers you go to each different segment and there will be like you know a station for beer or somebody driving around on a on a side by side mm -hmm. you know with with ice chests um, one year I remember we had the ice chest at Old Republic and w one of the side by sides and we were just driving around you know yeah. slanging beer and keeping so, people hydrated so Ron the 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 race happens on your ranch it does it's your property yes and then. Uh, where at? So, so you guys in Grass Valley, in Grass Valley, California. Okay. So what? One day you guys just decided, hey, let's dig out some, some runs on, on so, the property. So the origin of the ranch kind of goes back to Casey racing mountain bikes, and you know he raced car, uh, cross country in high school, and then he kind of graduated to the to the gravity side of things, and um, to this day he's still a great big mountain rider, uh, unbelievably talented big mountain rider. Um, so he started riding for North Star, the uh, the ski hill uh, giant, their their downhill team, and. Um, it was kind of one of those things where 2008 came along and, and you know, the, the real estate market went in the shitter and a developer that uh, it was going to develop, there, there was going to be about 140 houses up there on my ranch and he went BK, bankrupt. And um, so I'd ridden motor, there was some old moto trails on the land and so I'd ridden moto out there a bunch of times and that's actually where Casey learned to ride a motorcycle. When he was a little kid, I took him out there. We didn't own it obviously, but we took him out there and that's where he learned how to ride a motorcycle. And so just kind of, you know, found out what was going on with it. It was bank owned and, and I wanted to build a place uh, where him and his buddy could train, his buddies built some trails where they could train um, gravity, uh, downhill enduro. At the time it was called Super D. Um, enduro really wasn't a thing yet. And so that's how we ended up buying it. Or, and it was just, it was to build a place for him and his buddies to have a place to ride. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a awesome sweet for you. parent. Yeah, so how many acres? Uh, two hundred and twenty nine and a half, two hundred thirty. Oh, damn, wow. I didn't know it was that big. Yeah, it's and then so pretty. That country in Grass Valley, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's um, yeah, Chris, I, I I sent some um, I sent some videos to Chris. He can pull them up from the Instagram so people can kind of get a so, get a so, glimpse at what's going on there. So before we go back into the 
the TDS and, and some of the, the, the details for the race coming up, take us back a little further. Like, when did you start riding bikes? Uh, when Casey was uh, – <laughs> Casey started. We, we used to call him Fun Size because if you saw him today, you wouldn't realize he's he's as big as I am, and he you know he's like you know he's into CrossFit. You know how you know how you know he's into CrossFit. He'll tell you he's into CrossFit. <laughs> That's always the running joke. <laughs> he's got some apparel, <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. or a sticker on the truck. But he, but he's freaking yoked. He's yeah, freaking yeah, yoked. Oh, he's there. Those guys yeah. are fit. He's a yeah. fit guy. No, he's he's yoked, and and you know I. You know that curve, right? You know, dad's son, and it's like this, and I can still whip your ass. Uh-huh. No, I'm on the downhill side of that. <laughs> <laughs> but I told him, I said, that's okay. I fight dirty. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so yeah, Casey's a good dude. He, he's, uh, he, he's, he's very enthusiastic about the TDS race. He's always just ripping around. He's got his you know, laser focus eyes on. He's telling everybody what to do. And no, he's on it. But uh, anyway, don't used to screw call, with Casey. when he was a kid, he was tiny. I mean, he was, we just called him fun size because he was tiny. He was not going to be a stick and ball sport guy, right? So he he joined the, the high school cross country mountain bike team, and started riding bikes. And then, at that time, I was probably 285 pounds. I was a fat bastard. Um, and then, so I bought a mountain bike, and I hated it. Freaking hated it. I mean, it was so hard. It did you so hate riding up the hill, or did you like going downhill, no, or going did down, you just old moto guy? So going downhill was great. Was fun. Yeah, I was good at that. Right. Okay. Going uphill, man, it was just like it would, you know. I used to just get it was just sucked. It sucked. Oh yeah, and I was so fat, and out of shape, and two eighty, two eighty, two eighty five. Yeah, it's even like put a thirty pound weight on your back and go up this hill. That'll just kill you. Imagine, you know, hundred extra pounds. And I know. was I was doing a job up in Tahoe and uh, Tahoe City, and I and I so I bought a bike, and I was kind of going up Fiberboard Freeway, kind of going up the backside of two eighty nine or of eighty nine right there, to like kind of towards North Star. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, I don't know, maybe it was maybe a thousand feet of elevation gain, and it would just kick my ass. It would just kick my ass, and I'm like, this sucks, and you know, just having freaking little bitch fits about it. It was ugly. Were you riding with Casey at the <clears> time? <throat> oh yeah, and angry at him for making me do it. <laughs> um, so how did you guys like? How did all the trails end up being carved out? Was it just by like a shovel and pitchfork, or did so you what, guys have some equipment? I mean, because well, there is so a lot of work done on that ranch. I, I started I started building out there before I even bought it. Uh-huh. Uh, I was going out there, because like I said, I knew about it from some moto stuff, and I kind of started going out there with just, you know, a cloud and a, and a shovel and a rake and, and building stuff. Yep. And um, I did that for a while, and then, it, you know, it was kind of in this limbo, because like I said, the bank had foreclosed on the developer, mm-hmm. and um, so I'm like, well, no one's paying attention, so I started trailing one of my excavators from work up there. Hell yeah. <laughs> nice. I didn't even know it, right? And on the weekends, I'd go in there and freaking build a bunch of stuff with an excavator. So would you just, like, sneak through? Because there's neighbors there. I mean, there's neighbors I, up. I, and I, I told the one, the, the, one la- the one lady that busted me out there, I, I, I told her I knew the project manager really well, and, uh-huh. I, and I was doing perk and mantles. Nice. And, um, you just knew the right lingo. She's I knew like, the right I knew, is, <laughs> I knew the right lingo. So, And then... Um, Tried to buy it, um, and uh, it was a local a local bank that was holding the paper on it on the foreclosure, mm-hmm. and um, they wanted the full amount that was owed on it. And th- like I said, this is two thousand nine, so I mean, you know, the real estate market's completely in the shitter. Right. And um, and they uh, they said no, no, they you know they wanted the full one eighth that was owed on it, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. It's not worth that much. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, that bank got the the feds came in and seized that bank. No way. Yeah. So a bank in Chico called. Uh, Tri County's bank ended up with the bad paper. Oh man! And they called me, and they're like, "Yeah, hey, you know, we see you made an offer on this property. Are you still interested?" And I said, "Yeah, you should have sold it to me for what I offered the first time. Now <laughs> it's going to be less, and so it was considerably less." Nice. And uh, that's how I ended up with it. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, that worked out great. What and was the and, and the work had already he'd already been cutting the trails and yeah, and that's uh, I mean because. Any time you're going and building trails, you're just expecting the, the, to lose the, them. The tra- the, you know, the trail the trail thing really is community, though. I mean, yeah, I, I, I built a lot of the trails out there. But then, you, you know, you've gotten around the expo area, right? Yeah. That's all Casey. Casey did all that work as far as cutting pads. You know, he's in the same business I'm in. Mm-hmm. Um, that was all Casey. And then the community, as, as the event grew and, and, and the community got to be more and more involved all the time, it, you know, there was, you know, everybody was out there, you know, pitching and we had a work day yesterday. We probably had 40 people there. We, we have work days where there's a hundred people there. Yeah. That's um, awesome. So, um, and I, you know, I try to keep my ego checked and, <coughs> and let people, Hey, I want to build a line over here. Mm. 
okay, go, you know, go put flags in the ground and show me what you do. And I let him do it. Um, that's cool. And that's not to say we don't go over and we don't change some things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I first started building out there, I built trails two and three times because I I had a Moto I because that's what I knew was Moto. Mm -hmm. And um, I built stuff and I'd ride it and I'm like, that sucks. That is just freaking awful. On the mountain bike. You'd ride it after. Bike. Yeah. It would just it be too it, long, too sweeping. Nah, just you, you don't have a throttle. Right? Yeah, so and, you and couldn't get up. My certain I sections. said this is going to be super cool. You're going to come in here, grab a bunch of brake, and you're going to, you know, and come out of it. Mm -hmm. On a mountain bike, it doesn't work that way. Right. And so, um, carrying the same speed is different. You know, it, and you, you get better at, at having a better eye for it. And um, you know, uh, it's so it is really difficult. Like building trails with Darren, and it, you know, I was doing it for like two years, and you know, I came out and learned a little thing or two on on track day you know to mm -hmm. uh, tds and man like erosion control is a huge one um you know if you want to like build a build a berm you're going to spend hours building a berm but your erosion control sucks and then you got water filling up and then it's just you know after your first rain it's just yeah, you know, doing, garbage doing what i do for a living i mean i understand grades and you know grade reversals and all that stuff uh -huh. so okay, that, that, that that part's easy and the beauty of the ranch is because it's private property, mm -hmm. if, if I was to go out and say build for Tahoe National Forest, I couldn't do a fraction of what we do out there because they're going to keep you in a box. It's going to be 5% sustained. Um, it, you know, that, that's about as steep as they'll let you build. Mm -hmm. um, they're really, they really like your wheels on the ground a lot. Right. Um, and, so, and we don't. And so private property, we look at it and say, you know what, we should build a, creek, a trail down this creek bed. You'd never get away with that on public lands. Right. I can do whatever I want at my place. Yeah. Okay. Is so that vigilante? Is vigilante. That, that it's is a dry it? creek. It has, it's seasonal. I mean, it has water during the winter months. Uh -huh. um, but uh, Yeah, I've never seen it in the winter months. God, I can't wait till you can see. I, like, it's, yeah, it's, I, it's, I've been checking it out, and, uh, yeah, the, the design of the, the runs, um, it, it looks very complex. And uh, fast, big, Technical. big trees. Uh, we, we try to use, we, you know, we've got about 680 feet of elevation loss um, t on the north side, a little less than that, or excuse me, on the south side, a little less than that on the north side. Um, we've probably got, I don't know, t 18, 20 different ways down the mountain. Um, and so really kind of what we've done, I'm running out of mountain. I need a bigger mountain because I'm running out of places to put trails. Mm. Um, so what we've kind of been doing is we've been building little connectors so you can ride upper red beard and instead of going red beard all the way to the bottom there's a little connector that goes over and gets into uh you know angry dolphin or or you know or or one of the other trails you know moose knuckles um the know. names are awesome yeah. <laughs> and those all have like a name those all, all have a all reason, the names right? have a story behind them yeah so <laughs> uh what's your favorite trail uh, creepy mexican is is the one i've been riding a lot lately <laughs> I so that. so creepy so creepy mexican <laughs> It was, the year, it was the year you were there, I think. It was the first year Jerome Clements came over. Who The, the French guy. The French guy. I so remember, Jer yes. Jerome, I remember. Jerome Clements, um, stud rider, unbelievable. Uh, Mark Weir brought him over, and um, uh, Jerome had won, had won the first, the inaugural Enduro World Series um, uh, you know, on the UCI level. So world champion, right? Rainbow stripes, the whole shooting match. And uh, Jerome comes over. And uh, he wins, and they were interviewing. I think it was Pink Bike was interviewing him after the event. And uh, so they're talking to him, you know, and Ben Cruz walks behind him, and that's another one of, of, of Weir's buddies. And Jerome Clements goes, ah, look, the creepy Mexican. So, and it was like, trail name. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, uh, one of my good friends from um, growing up, uh, Ryan Rodriguez. Yeah. Um, you know, he, uh, we call him Fathead Ryan. Um, Dude, he's he's hella good. He's yeah. I, he didn't. He did. He he showed up on Friday. Uh huh. He didn't make it out of practice last year. He didn't make it. That's he, right. He he, he, he he made it 15 minutes. He watered up on the. Uh, we got that metal booter down in the expo area. Okay. And yeah. Oh, the the ramp. Yeah, the metal ramp. Oh, and he was hitting that <laughs> before practice even started. He um he he uh, oh. he took a dirt sample with his face. Oh. Yeah, that's that's Ryan, man. Yeah, he, that's him. He'll eat some. He'll eat some big. He'll eat some shit. He's good. Pe Ryan's a good dude too. I, I actually think he, he. I think his band's playing this year. Oh, cool. Yeah, he so. comes pretty much every year. Oh, every year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's he's had a mixed bag. He broke his shoulder there probably four years ago. Uh huh. And then, like I said, this last year he, you know, he he was pretty pumped to be there and uh, didn't quite make it out of the uh, the metal the metal kicker. That's how it goes. You know, it this can go like that on uh, on on like the trial run too. This is such an extreme sport. Uh, 
you know, we were talking a little earlier about crashing and, uh, you know, you see these guys hucking themselves down these trails and, and I'm sure every, um, year when you guys have the TDS, I'm sure you guys have, uh, the paramedics on site, but uh, it just goes with the sport, right? Uh, uh, it, it, it does. It does. I mean, look, if you ride things two wheeled fast and you, know, whether it's a motorcycle on a, on an enduro course or a moto track, or, you know, on, a, on the street. I mean, if you're going to ride stuff with two wheels fast, you're going to crash. It's going to happen. If you're not, and if you don't crash, you're not trying hard enough. Yeah, it's not a matter of if, it's when. You yeah. know, I mean, it just happens. So our I, medical team is unbelievable. I've been averaging now, and, and I'm, the last one kind of has me embarrassed because uh, it was only a few months between crashes. But I'm averaging like a crash every 10 months now. Like, uh, He's a big road cyclist. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, and you know what? Uh, so if, you, you're you hear, yeah, if you're crashing every 10 months on a road cycle, you're doing something wrong. That's because they, they hurt. Road, yeah. road crashes freaking hurt. Yeah, well. It takes him out, man. And he's a big dude. He's yeah. not a fucking small guy. You know? No, just, a, just the. He's just got a lot of weight to, to carry the, on. The road rash, man, it is so gnarly. It's so gnarly. I think gnarly. the main thing for me is uh, I'm always pushing it. And um, the, the, the bike trail is not always the best place to push it because there's a lot of pedestrians. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm putting in a lot of my training on the Sacramento uh, River bike trail, mm-hmm. and it's and it's crowded. You know, uh, uh, so yeah, s- some were out of my control. So <laughs> luckily, luckily, I walked. You know, away. funny funny story there. Um, I've got a specialized gave me a gravel e bike. Okay, so it, it's a <clears throat> it's kind of, it's really super cool. You know, I mean, I'm getting old. I'll be 63 in May. Um, you know, have you know, I, you know, on the bike path, I won't even turn it on. But if you want to turn it on, you can. And you guys uh, know uh, Shana Paulus's brother Nielsen, uh, World Tour Tour rider. So yeah. I'm I'm on my gravel e bike, and I'm going 21, 22 miles an hour, and, and I'm in a I'm in a I'm freaking a pretty good clip. He goes past me like I'm standing still, and I'm like, and I didn't realize who it was, and so, I mean, I'm up out of the saddle, and I'm freaking putting in the watts, right, and this guy just rides away from me, and I get up to Folsom, right, uh, right by the Rainbow Bridge right there, uh-huh. and he had stopped, and I pulled up on him, and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> that's a, that's a, serious, <laughs> yeah, try to Would hold you, that wheel. You're not going to hold that wheel. Yeah. I mean, those, the, the, the watts those guys can sustain, and it didn't look like he was working real hard at it, and like I said, I'm pretty fit, and with an e-bike, and this this dude dropped me like it was a bad habit. It, on an e-bike? I was on an e-bike. Oh, no, wow, I, I, didn't, I, I missed that part. I yeah. was like, I didn't know you do much road riding. No, no, no I, I've got <laughs> I, I've got road bikes, and I ride road bikes, but they specialized gave me a gravel e-bike. And okay. So it's a road bike with, you know, little, little low-profile knobby tires. And yeah. It's, it's great. The stuff around Folsom, um, uh, Granite Bay, mm-hmm. those trails out there, so I'd ride over there and ride all that stuff over in Granite Bay. And like I said, this guy, he went by me, and I'm just like, hey, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll show you. No. <laughs> Yeah, Damn, mo- that's most crazy. e-bikes on the trail, I can I can clip them and I use them. I mean, they're nice because they can keep that 22, 23, mm-hmm. 24 miles an hour. And uh, unless it's like some tuned up bike, yeah, um, they're they're governed at a certain point. And yeah, uh, cl- class one, it'll, it'll go twenty miles an hour before you lose power. Now the the road bikes will go twenty eight miles an hour before they, you lose assist. Yeah, they uh, ha- and what's a road bike e bike? They have like actual Cannondale e bike. Actually, yeah. no, I did. I saw I saw a group of people just like a week ago on uh, like a actual tw- twenty one speed road bike yeah and it was mm. in an e-bike yeah, i was mo- like that is so cheating r- the, the e-bike thing is, is is right now i think um in europe probably two years ago they were cannondale for instance was probably selling seven e-bikes for every for out of seven out of ten bikes they sold were e-bikes yeah um, so you know it's they're free. fun they're hella fun they're, but the, the other thing is this look you make a good argument. I'm pretty sure you're about to get into it right now. Well, I mean, look, at the end of the day, am I as fit riding an e-bike as I was when I was riding analog? I call them Amish bikes. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> um, the, ans- the, the answer to that is from a cardio perspective, I think I am as fit. From, from, a, from a leg strength perspective, I'm not as fit. There's no doubt about it. Uh-huh. I mean, I'll get on my, one of my Amish bikes, and it's like, this is freaking hard. What the f? <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's real. But hard work. I, I think there's an argument to be made, and I've worn a heart rate monitor numerous times and done you know repeated laps and looked at okay average heart rate. You know, I'll do a loop from the house and go out to the ranch and do five hill repeats mm-hmm. and ride home, and I'll look at my average heart rate. And it's you know it's 128. Okay, and then. I'll do it on the e-bike, and I'll look at it. And it's 126. It was two beats lower, right? Not not dramatically, but definitely a lower average heart rate. Mm-hmm. 
But I did it in 50 minutes less. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And you can ride twice as much. Or Correct. Three times as so, much. So, you know, th- there's a lot of hate out there on the e-bikes. And, you know, and, and it kind of reminds me, I'm old enough to remember when snowboards came out. And, and, it, and it was, you know, all the skiers, oh, they're going to ruin the sport. And they're going to, you know, they're going to destroy the mountain. And none of it was true. And frankly, snowboarding probably saved the ski industry to an extent. Mm-hmm. And e-bikes are going to save the biking industry to sure. an extent. Yeah. My my, my my thing with the e-bike is um, a lot of the people that are purchasing the bike, mm-hmm. um, they're novice riders, um, and they, they're fast. And um, when you're going over 20 miles an hour, and then you actually have to handle the bike. When Agreed. You have to, when Agreed. you have to put it into a corner or something, mm-hmm. a lot of them don't realize on a bicycle that's – fast you have to be a skilled rider to do that on an analog bike Mm -hmm. you know uh, to do these speeds over 22 miles an hour um, and they're doing that easily on an e-bike and then I've seen it I've seen it a couple times because I'll ride up on these riders and they're moving pretty good and we're right and they'll go into a corner and they lo- they don't know what to do. Push it into the bushes. Yeah, they yeah. can't handle it. Uh, the, they're gonna try to ride with me. They f- they hear the, me. They see me. And then but they can't handle the machine. The, you know the the line is is kind of blurred when you when you talk about it. With you know when you look at e bikes, they're, they're classified a class one e bike, class one a, a class one e bike mountain bike. It will give you pedal assist to twenty miles an hour. Okay, assist. If you don't pedal it, it won't go. Okay, you it's only giving you assist. A class two um, will go, I think, 28 miles an hour, and that's probably what you see on the bike path a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's kind of the cruisers you see people riding and stuff like that. That's mm-hmm. a that's a class two. Okay, mm-hmm. and that'll give you an assist to about 28 miles an hour. Now, once you get into the class threes, let's have a throttle, right? And the last, you know, I haven't ridden the bike path in a bit, but the last time I rode over there, what the bike path had kind of turned into was it was a commuter lane for people to work downtown. And the, the stuff that people were riding on the bike path was like... Not a bicycle. It is not a bicycle <laughs> at dead. all. Yeah. That's why I'm like, what the heck? And zoom. And this thing weighs, you know, over 100 pounds. Oh, easily. Got oh, a easily. basket on the front. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. they're in their suit. Oh, no. <laughs> they're three-piece just trying to get true story, to the man. firm. I'm like, <laughs> you need to, I'm like, you need to earn that 20 miles an hour. These yeah. guys are... Just, just get sweet. on the road at that point. It's like... Yeah. Well, I mean, and, you know, look, if I was, you know, not that I'd ever be a suit-wearing guy in downtown Sacramento, but if I was and I lived in Folsom or Granite Bay, that's how I'd get to work. Hell, yeah. It's so I much mean, more fun, too. It, it, that or, you know, the, and it's the death march on 50? No, man, I'm taking the bike path. Yeah, yeah save that's some like money, Vince. too. That's what Vince does. Yeah. He commutes uh, uh, one of our, our last guests. Yeah, that's what he does. It's he, a beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful thing to be able to ride a, your bike to work. Yeah, I lived in Midtown and I, I sold my car. I didn't even have a car, and I used to ride all over. And I'd come and visit my family up in El Dorado Hills. I just, you know, take the light rail up and then ride from Folsom to El Dorado. You know, Hills. It's, it, it, it's we're still working on catching Europe as far as being bike friendly and 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 getting people out of their cars and getting people on bikes and. You know, and I mean, it, a lot of what we do at the ranch is, is, is really designed to get kids on bikes. We, you know, we've got uh, several elementary schools that uh, the bike clubs train out there. Uh, the Nevada Union High School team trains out there. And so it's, it's just, you know, it's about getting people, you know, get them on bikes, get them introduced to it early, try to get them involved in the trail building aspect of it to understand to have nice things. you got to put in some effort. Mm-hmm. I mean, nothing's free. But back to the, the, the bikes and getting people off out of cars and on bikes we still do really dumb shit. Like when they built the new Bay Bridge, they built a, a really bitchin' bike lane that goes to Treasure Island. <laughs> it doesn't go across no. the whole thing. No. What? No. It, it just stop. Uh, well, that's. You'd no, think now, that granted, that was the, the that was the new part of the Bay Bridge, but you would think that, you know, I know a lot of people that work in the city and live in the East Bay, and I mean, and if that was an option, so you could ride from the Oakland Hills, into the city. I mean, uh, people would freaking eat that shit up. I mean, the Who golden okayed that. So, because the, the new bridge only goes to Treasure, Treasure Island, Island, and then it just but, goes. And I, I don't know this for old. a fact. I know there were conversations about retrofitting the, the existing span uh. with, for a bike lane, just you know, for that. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, it may come. I don't know, but it, you know, it, you know, it, my bet is that I probably won't be alive to see it, um, just because they move so slowly and. You go to Europe and you go to you go to Amsterdam and, and you know a lot of the Scandinavian countries and you look at the emphasis they put on, you know, getting people out of cars, getting people on bicycles and and just the the way people use bicycles for really for what they are they're a motor transportation. Yeah. And um, so like I said, I, it's coming here. 
America is a much different country, no doubt about it. Um, and we definitely have a love affair with our cars, um, like no other country in the world, I believe. But I, I think that when you start looking at, and look, I'm not a big climate change guy or anything else, but I just think that for people's health and happiness, get them on a bike. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you get on a bike and don't, you know, every time I get on a bike, I feel like I'm eight years old again. You know, it never fails. You know, my old cycling coach used to, I used to, man, I really don't want to ride today. And he used to say, just go for a block and, you know, see how you feel. And if you feel okay, go for another block. And without, I've never, ever done, I mean, including some really death march rides. Never got on off a bike and said I regret doing that. It's never happened. Yeah, it really, uh, um, a lot of people find it. They get on the bike and, it, they, yeah, they return. It's like a lot of us grew up on a bike. Mm-hmm. And when you get on it, it's it's such a enjoyable feeling of freedom mm-hmm. and, and being outside and, and uh, yeah, you need that. People need that. And I think um, they forget. They, yeah, f- they forget. You do. And then you, you return to it and then you're like, ah, you know, uh, you can see how people get addicted to it. Especially when you jump on one of these trails that are being built, like even just like a, you know, a, oh, a, a, a small, just a Folsom Trail Where or we like live, around the lake. It's beautiful. It's like, so pretty. Just like get on the bike. You don't need a, a super nice one. You can get on a fucking Huffy and just cruise around and then, you you know. No way. I just I just did uh, Donner. You're talking about 89. Mm-hmm. Uh, my family has a cabin up at Donner Lake. And okay. I go, I go do that. So usually. you go up old 40 up over the, over the top? Well, I do Donner and up. Um, I do up Donner Lake to Rayleigh's. Okay. And then I take a right on 89 that goes up 89 to uh, Lake Tahoe. So okay. um, past uh, Squaw Valley. Okay. Uh-huh. okay. We're, still ca- we're still calling it that. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's what I know it as. It'll always be Squaw Valley for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, but I used to do that too. I would take a right and head up the, the grade to the ski resorts. But then I, I also go up to uh, Lake Tahoe there. And then I do the descent as well. Do you actually go to the lake? Yeah. Isn't that, what is, is that Emerald Bay? No, um, no, no, I'm not sure what part. It's right up there in uh, well, Ta- that's, Tahoe uh, that's City. Like yeah, Tahoe City, King. West Shore, and if you hang a right and go around, you can go around to like Sunnyside. And, uh, you can get to Emerald that way if you keep going. There's actually a path that goes most of the way to Emerald. Oh, man, that would be such so a pretty ride. I do. Mine's like a TT. It's like uh, 15 miles up, 15 miles back. Okay. I get permission from my wife. She's staying at the cabin. <laughs> no, but, uh, I did it. In, uh, so have you done? A, have you gone up over the top old 40 and gone to Cisco? That's a great no. ride. One of my I, favorite road rides ever um, is that, that road ride. Unbelievably great road ride. I, I just need to get with some guys. Uh, I'm always by myself up there. Right. And, and uh, it's pretty treacherous. Um, even the last one, there was it snowed like a foot the weekend I was there. Right. But then the roads thaw during the day. And yeah. the sun's out, so I'm hitting these rides, you know. So uh, you were able to go out when uh, that last trip? Yeah, I rode, like I rode snowing? twice. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I actually put the um, uh, pretty good, I PR'd Donner. Yeah, uh, yeah. So a king <laughs> of the mountain. So if I, you I do put that, like eighty <laughs> better watts than last season. Like I put, you know, uh, uh, my fitness has gotten a lot. So if better. you want to do a, a cool out and back from Donner, um, just go down to Alpine and hang a right and climb yeah. up to Alpine. Um, that's a good out and back too, because that climb up Alpine's it's, you know, seven and a half eight percent sustained. It's it, it's kind of an ass kicker. Avalanche Mountain, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a crazy do have, documentary. Avalanche Meadows. I had no idea that that happened. Like my whole life growing up until I saw that documentary. That's that whole ridge. Really? Yeah. That's I that whole. That's never, that whole ridge right there. Yeah, my, uh, snowboarded there. Debbie's I'm, Debbie's uncle was actually Uncle Rob was actually working there when that happened. He, the the girl that got uh, uh, killed. Uh huh. He actually yeah. knew her well. Wow. No way. Yeah. Damn, that's a crazy story. That I, documentary was really good. It was really good. It, it was cool to see how. They had like had to manage the mountain back before there was all this all this technology. You right, know, it was right. really like you know you had to be boots on the ground and like understand the mountain. You you needed to be there in order to know what was going to happen. I still think that's like you know mostly true today, but you don't have all like the yeah, the, apps you know and the stuff uh, that we have. <coughs> we Casey and I were, we had snowmobiles. We were we were kind of heavy into the backcountry sledding, mm-hmm. and then we took a couple. You know, I took an Avi class and and. That started kind of wigging me out. I just, I was like, man, that is not the way I want to die. No, yeah, it's like no, this drowning. No, You're like, no, oh, I don't want to drown in no. white water rapids. And, and we were starting, you know, the, the sleds nowadays will put you in places you shouldn't be. No shit. They're, it, they're, they're so, so fun. They're it's, so freaking You'll just, good. you'll lose track of what you're doing. You'll, cause, and then you'll be miles out and having so much fun. And you're like, you know, 
Yeah. You know, I mean, so and that Gas was is a, you know issue. that was kind of like before the Abbey Pack started coming out, and you know that was that was right when they were starting to come out, and and I'm you know, and again I'm starting to get a little older, and if, you know the stuff we were riding on Powder Days, which was the great riding, uh-huh. you spend more time digging your sled out than you do riding it. I'm yeah, like, I was like, this kind of sucks. It's a lot of work <laughs> when you get those things stuck, and they're yeah. fun when they're on top of the snow, but it's when they not sink, fun when it's they're stuck. Not fun. Those guys get to blast those uh, cornices though. Oh, they do. That looks fun. Dude, when they come up over the top. Yeah, if you guys ever want, there's a video called Slednecks. Okay. Dude. That'd be good. Slednecks? D- these dudes can ride. And it's some, of the, some of the shit they do is just like, holy crap. Bring up a Slednecks video. Um, I, uh, before we get too far ahead, I, ca- I wanted to ask about um, the, the schools that you guys are having at the ranch. That's pretty cool. Um, so so <coughs> how, how did so that end? Did they reach out to you? Did you guys want to... I know, did, did Debbie have, um, your wife Debbie? So she teaches down in Linda. So uh, these are all the local schools. Like Union Hill School is the school right there at the bottom of the hill when you come down the hill from the ranch. Yep. Okay, that's Union Hill Elementary. Chris Thibodeau, is the, uh, he runs the mountain bike club there, old racer. Um, so uh, they train out there, and it, it's pretty cool. I mean, you'll be, they'll come out there, and there'll be 30 little groms out there, and they, they get on the dual slalom track right there by the – Yeah. Oh, that's a cool and, one. The and they, slalom track is sick. Ju- they, just, they just hamster that thing and lap after lap after lap after lap. And is it el- elementary school? Yeah, those kids, I think, go to fifth grade. I think it's okay. first through fifth. And then um, their uh, Grass Valley Charter School, their, their, their group comes out, and uh, the kids are always out there. Mm-hmm. I think they run on Tuesdays. And then, like I said, the high school – We'll use it for training intermittently. Um, we've got a, a, a really good cross country course out there. Uh, Jet Load does a wide bonk cross country race out there every year. It's uh, it's about a five mile lap, and it's about almost a thousand feet of climbing per lap. So you go out and do that. You go hit that lap four times, <laughs> yeah. and and they're sh- and they're not super big sustained climbs. They're they're, <coughs> they're punchy, painful bastards. Yeah, yeah that's you know? well, your whole hillside. It's, 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 it's a hillside. Yeah, <laughs> I mean everything out there. I mean it, unless you go in there and start doing a bunch of benching uh, mm-hmm. to try to take some of the pitch out of it. Yep. Everything is you know ten twelve percent. Um, it's steep. It hurts, except on e-bikes. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't hurt that much. No, it's yeah. nice. Or to you get can well, you can govern the hurt. You can say, okay, I want this to hurt a lot, and you you know you turn it off. It will hurt a lot. Yeah. Okay. You put it in turbo, doesn't hurt at all. That's that's pretty sweet. That's a and then you can just get to ride more. You know, you get to get up a little bit faster and uh, get to enjoy those downhills a little bit more. It's always that that the balance of is it better to yeah. work ridiculously hard oh there you go sled sled yeah dude, they were just driving through S- fucking sled next four yeah yeah sled next four let's go so i went i went to a really cool place in montana um in like 2000 probably eight or so six 2006 you, you got to be a moto guy to get into this huh Who, how do you find yourself in this hobby so Cook, <laughs> Cook City, Montana. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, so th- that's some old. These guys are old school. Here. That is yeah. an old one right there. Have you ever heard of Cook City, Montana? I have not. It's a. It's this place that's just like out in the middle of nowhere, and there's like, I don't know, a, a couple hundred thousands of acres to just roam of trail that you can ride that's all like mapped out and you can get like a guide and stuff and it's the town that you go in on is this old western town just like a little shotgun town and everybody has snowmobiles in the winter time family sleds the whole whole, like you know school bus looking thing i've never seen sleds that look like that and then um in the in the summertime it's all atvs okay so it's just like no there's there was one like old 80 something f-150 and that was about it everything else was sleds for the grocery getters to the, taking the kids to school. That's wild. It was just all uh, just a town all on sleds. Yeah, see, this, cool. this, this is like a really old one. The, the, the new one with the big mountain sleds, this stuff is tame compared to what they're doing now. Hmm. These guys will huck it. They will huck it. They'll do like 100-foot drops. Oh, insane drops. Yeah, it's nuts. The guy that went with us, that took uh, one of the younger guys, he went over this hill and just, you know, on the crest of this mountain mm-hmm. and just jumped off, and it was like you insane. Know, <clears throat> Like that, yeah. Like that's pretty. That's pretty big hug there, but I mean, people, you know, it's like you know Ken Block, right? Mm-hmm. On a sled, and you know, I mean, like I said, they're the the thing. They weigh five hundred pounds, um, and if they decide they want to beat, you know, beat you up a little bit, and you know, and Ken was a great rider from all you know people I know that had ridden with him. He was an unbelievably good rider. I mean, obviously the guy could do anything and mm-hmm. great talent in a car and everything else, and you know, unfortunately, man, it killed him. Um, right. So. You yeah, know. that was unfortunate loss. The, the sleds. Oh, he did die on the snowmobile. He huh? did. That's he did. right. Yeah, in Utah. 
So I talk about that a lot. Um, See, here you go. Oh, here. those now, are the new Now we're getting ones. into the new slides. Dang, that was a pretty tricky move right there. The production quality went way up. Yeah. It all, <laughs> all of a sudden, they look cooler, too. <laughs> so, so, Ron, I talk, we talk about the, the calculated risk a lot because of the sport that I'm in with boxing. And, um, you know, it's like, it, how do we pick this hobby? You know, boxing, uh, uh uh, cycling uh, my mom's like are you addicted are you addicted to adrenaline uh, so you, you know let me uh, ask you a question because we're not getting paid no you're uh, not but and we we're talking you, to justin you know about his fighting career do you and, ever feel more alive than when you scare the shit out of yourself yeah it's like i need it thank you mm -hmm. yeah it, i need it um and it in uh, some of the most ex amazing experiences come from it you know and i see guys doing this kind of stuff i was also watching this documentary on these mountain climbers and uh you know these guys that do you know everest and these other <laughs> peaks and what pushes someone to do that yeah that, um, that's it's that's the f it's the f in the it's tds living. everyone's gearing up everyone's training all year they're yeah. gearing up they're gonna go huck them you know uh, th it, it, this is a, a passion it's a passion project you know uh, uh uh, Until you feel those that feeling, it it's that's life. Like you're alive when you you know. Well, most of us aren't making any money. It's all about that. You know, it's all about it's the, the passion. passion. Uh, and that's and that's what. <clears throat> but that's where like kind of gets you to the making the money. You, you don't know, usually the, just jump into something and then you're like making you know, the money. The old the old saying: Don't don't be so afraid of dying, you forget to live. Yeah. Um. You know, I mean, there, I think there's some credence there. Um. It, I, I, again. What I do for a living is is it can be inherently dangerous. It is, you know there you know like I said I spend a, a fair amount of time in a helicopter. Um, we are working under big equipment all the time. Okay, but that it's calculated risk, right? It's what you do, right? Now if I get on my motorcycle and I and I go out and and Lord knows I've hit the ground more more times than I you know care to remember. But you know that when you scare the shit out of yourself, I mean really scare the shit out of yourself, man, you're alive for that next 30 seconds when you're like oh shit yeah yeah i mean that's life i mean that it's never going to get any more intense than that it's okay and that i think you know with you guys in the in the in the martial arts and the contact sports i think it gets in your head i mean you guys probably know a lot of the the fighters are get a little older and retire and and how do they replace that and i think that's you know guys coming out of the nfl i i think that how do you replace that that like we were talking, camaraderie, adrenaline, um, being part of something bigger than yourself, um, and I and I think that people that that take chin, you know, go fast and take chances, right? That's how they get that, for lack of a better term, that fix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're feeding their soul. You you, you uh, it, it's like a necessary thing for for some people. You, you, just sitting around, I could never do it. I'm uh, I'm gonna get up and do something. You know, it's like I can't sleep right unless I have it. Yeah. Uh, once you get find something that induces that thought, that thought and the feeling of of feeling alive and the camaraderie, especially in the gym or if, you know, you've got a bike club or whatever it may be, um, all of that hard work together with your other friends, mm -hmm. you know, it just compounds on that feeling because then you have the camaraderie with each other and, you know, the solo, the, like biking can be a very solo type of sport. Um, and you know, you're pushing yourself, you're, you're making your schedule, you're getting your recovery in, but then, you know, when you throw it in the gym, um, you know, it really kind of amps that up. Or when you have like a TD, like a bike race, like TDS, you have mm -hmm. something to kind of, I mean, I might be biased cause I don't do a really, um, solo sport, but it, builds on top of like where I want to go next what do I want to do like uh, if this year we raced like this and this you know the trail looked this way mm -hmm. you know how can we make it better what do we have to do do we need to bring a DJ in this time you know you like you know with the camaraderie you build and everybody has a little idea and it just you know yeah. compounds on those you know we, and we, were, we were kind of talking about that and you know society is a weird thing I mean so many guys that I know, um, you know, the guys that I rode with, you know, moto and mountain bike, most of them don't ride anymore, right? Um, you know, whether life got in the way and, and, you know, some of it's, you know, I just got old and I always, you know, it's not, it's not that you, you got old and quit. It's that you quit and got old yep. is, is the way I see it, right? Yeah. And it's just, 
I think we kind of lack that that especially you know and I'm, uh, what do you think that is what 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 is it <clears throat> is, is it like a i mean f- from a man's standpoint like what makes is it complacency in the relationship is it, it do you think it becomes just like you just i think it's a i think it's a mindset Netflix and ends I, up sucking you up or like I, I i can guarantee i can you know in, you know in a time machine i could come back and see you two guys in 40 years and in 40 years you guys are going to be pushing back as hard as you look i'm 63 i'll be 63 in may uh, yeah, okay, I hate to admit it, I'm on the back nine, you know. Now, whether I'm on the frickin' 12th hole or the 17th hole, who knows? Mm-hmm. That's the mystery, right? <laughs> right. Okay, but I'm not afraid of dying. I don't want to die. Okay, what I'm afraid of is getting old. That's what, I'm, that's what scares the shit out of me, and I know that if I keep pushing back and I keep going fast and I keep taking chances, I mean, that's, you know, the, the sun. It combats that getting that, old it's, feeling. It's, it's, it's that, you know, the boys of summer, it's the sun on my face one more day. Hell yeah. Right? And, yeah. And it's just, and I know that, you know, Father Time's undefeated. He's a cruel bastard. Okay. But I know that I'm going to go as hard as I can, as long as I can. And I just think that's, I see, it's just almost being lost in today's society. And it sucks. And, it, and that, and like you and I were talking, having, having your bros, right? having your mates having your buds Mm -hmm. and i I think it's so important for guys to have that you know that connection with with you know people that share you know uh, same interests same passions whatever the case may be and i just see it kind of going away and i and i I don't know why it's going away but i see it going away the 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 circle you keep in the norm i think the norm um, like what we do is not the norm we're we're a very small uh, group and then the the adult men that we have it's it's a a, a little army troop uh, most of the guys work they go home and then that's it uh, um, so i think it's real easy for guys to slip back into that even if they were part of the circle for a while it's easy to uh, go and go inside and be comfortable and i don't know, know who i would but then in the long run you guys start thinking guys start looking and they start uh, wanting to do something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then that's one of the, the goals of the podcast do. is to uh, uh, feed the interest and, and talk about what guys are actually doing. Also, if you have a good circle, I'm going to call you. Hell yeah. I'm going to make you come. We're going to go. We're going to network. We're going to go on a ride. We're going to sure. We're going to train. We're going to plan a vacation uh, to fight people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're always challenging ourselves in our circle. Vacations to fight people. That the, sounds yeah, like, we're gonna sounds like about my vacation. Yeah. 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 Ron, you're Ron, invited. <laughs> Ron, Ron, we're going to talk about that because uh, next month, yeah, I'm taking a team to Arizona. Okay. E- every year they have the USMTO National Championships for Muay Thai. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to take a, a team from this gym out there, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, that's what we do, right? We, we could be sitting inside watching TV, but instead – we're part of this circle, um, and I'm, I'm the proud leader, you know, of organizing these young athletes and, and pushing them to their potential, and, and some of them reaching goals that they never even had. Huh, Justin? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's a great teacher, and, yeah, he, there's a uh, – I mean, me, myself, you know, I, this is my – I've well, formally announced it. I mean, I'm retiring from fighting. This, I wanted – I was going to make this my last year. Um, and I would, you know, take, I had an opportunity earlier this year to have one, um, didn't end up panning out. And then, you know, I kind of just was like, well, maybe if I, if something comes up later on this year with a one or whatever else, I'll take one. If it makes sense, if coach, you know, has an opponent for me, but I think like now where I'm at right now, I don't want to get back on the horse and, and get back into like fight shape where I'm, you know, running three to five days a week and, you know, training every single day. Cause I, you know, I, so I made the decision to s- step back away from that because I was wanting to be a more attentive father, get my 50-50 custody um, all buttoned up. And then, um, you know, I'm doing really well with my side work on electrical. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, no, um, you know, I don't do side work. I was just going to say you don't but, do side um, work anymore. You, yeah. You, you, <laughs> no, I just you do I, your career. I, I do my yeah. career. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, so, yeah, I, I you did so good. things are going good. You did um, really good. And, and uh, you did it in a in a short amount of time uh three years um and i i know you were in martial arts before that but the time i handled you as a fighter um you did a lot and, and uh yeah you did it in style you didn't get hurt yep um 
It was like a three hard years, man. I was like here fucking every day. I'd come on the weekends even. And yeah, and, and that's hard to do. Um, uh, that, that's hard to do when you're not living at your dad's. Um, yeah, I was you know, 31 when I started with you. A lot of these young fighters, they, you know, have a part-time job. They don't have kids. You know, they live at home. You having to work and raise your son and do all that, you did really well. And, um, yeah, to continue to fight into your 30s, uh, a lot of times I'm going to discourage guys from doing that. Um, there's other stuff that you should be doing in your life uh, and pursuing your boxing career is kind of – the door shut on that yeah uh, and there's a lot you can do um, as a martial artist in the gym and study boxing without sacrificing all that time from your family life and, and your work and everything else um, so I, th I really think uh, you, you made a good decision there yeah I, I, well, I like I said earlier you know when I told mentioned it to you you definitely were no hesitation to support what my decision was and that helped along you know with it because you know, like if you were if you were to tell me, you know, no, 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 we got a couple more years on you, you know, that would have been a little bit of a stinger. I'd have been like, shit, I can't quit, I can't bitch out now, man. I, I got coach tell me I got more fights. No, I put you in, I put you in tough too, and then uh, yeah, you can you can feel proud about that. But I just really hope you and then all the other guys that fought for me. I I hope that uh, the martial art culture rubs off on you and you continue to challenge yourself. But uh, it, but be smart with it. You know, yeah. longevity is important, and um, boxing and tie boxing, these fighting sports, they got to be respected. You know, uh, uh, it's a full time commitment, and uh, if you're not willing to do that, you shouldn't fight. You know? Right. You gotta yep. have the time. You gotta have the time for it. Uh, I was, gonna, I was telling Chris, who am I taking to the yeah, tournament? Yeah, who are you gonna bring to Arizona? So we got Big Berto, the heavyweight. Kay. He's in he's in Thailand right now, uh, uh, getting in shape in the heat. Then we have um, Tyler Lloyd who's making a comeback this year. Watch out. I know you guys are around 130 pounds. Tyler's in camp, and we're looking uh, mm -hmm. uh, to challenge. He is a, he's uh, a fucking he, he's a problem. Yeah, before COVID, Tyler was number four ranked amateur in the world in that weight. Um, he's undefeated. Um, you know, he's, he's in the, the, the top part of his career. You know, we're looking to uh, attack the circuit for a couple more years with him. So I'm taking him. He actually won the tournament in 2017 mm. before COVID and okay. everything got weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I'm also looking to take Incho, and um, Incho's a heavy favorite in his weight class as well. Um, what else do we have? We have Carlos, one of our young lightweights. Yep. Um, we have uh, Julian, our teenager. 17 year old uh he, he'll be very exciting and uh he's fun watch to watch out. yeah watch out it's fun for to watch the does. young guy mm -hmm. the young guys with the, like a lot of he's he's just here he's a silent grinder he he shows up to class most most days yeah um, um we, we also have cooper who's in, in on the junior team as well um mm -hmm. but yeah we're kind of getting the team right now the training camp starts tomorrow so we're looking to turn things up. You got to make sure you're in here helping to push the guys. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll definitely be there. What so what's that? What what does that look like when you go and bring? You know, are you guys? How does the the format for the tournament work? Is, is it fighting like multiple times a day, guaranteed, or is it? Um, so the format just is depends on how many people are in your class. Everyone flies in. You weigh in Thursday. The tournament starts on Friday. Um, it's crazy. They have three boxing rings in the same room, um, so three simultaneous fights. Okay. They, they have, you know, five hundred plus uh, competitors from around the country, um, broken into different skill and weight categories. And yeah, if you lose, you're out. If you win, you keep going. You go to the next. And yeah. so, so how it, how why do people end up fighting? multiple times in a day is it because they have so many people in the class that they need to just get through those fights yeah it depends how many people's in your bracket but so it, if you, you know, only have so tournament style okay so if you only have so many and it, uh, it they don't try to rush it through though if if you can fight one today and the next one tomorrow they don't they don't yeah yeah they, they don't give you a day break yeah now, now sometimes what happens is they have very low uh enrollment into a weight class so there might only be two people in that weight which kind of sucks because it's a national tournament, 
in a tournament. You and then the loser the gets second and place trophy, and they're and like, "This yeah. is mixed martial arts or boxing?" It's Thai boxing. Thai boxing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so unfamiliar with that. What is? Uh, what are the rules of that? Yeah. Go ahead. So Muay Thai is um, in this era is a widely practiced worldwide martial art, mm -hmm. but it's also um, a, a huge sport. And um, it comes from Thailand, okay. uh, hence the name. And uh, it's basically stand-up striking punches, kicks, elbows, knees. There's a wrestling element to it as well. Okay. Um, and, yeah, they adopted certain things from boxing, uh, the gloves, the ring, okay. uh, the length of the round. Uh, and, and so can the fight go to the ground? or, or It can, cannot? but then okay. they stop it. And so there's sweeps and takedowns. Okay. Uh, but once it goes to the ground, they stand them back up. Okay. But yeah. not like a sh double leg takedown or like so you when you'd stand up and you'd clinch and you'd you know wrap arms. So or the whatever. wrestling component would not be part of that then. It's not like wrestling like traditional Greco-Roman or like well, jujitsu style like grappling. That type. No. Nope. So like you would you would um, on your feet like clinching. Okay. Like so you would you would be grabbing each other and you'd like offset your opponent and you'd sweep his leg out and then they would fall to the ground okay and you could like you know go down with them and just like drop Land your on elbow them. on them but you you can't make it look like you're like suplexing the guy or something like okay. that okay okay but if you end up like just tossing them on the ground and then falling on top of him and strategically landing on him in a dangerous way right that's legal okay so, so there's many forms of kickboxing um but the thai style of kickboxing They've had it the longest. Um, and in the modern era, these styles eventually fought each other. Okay. And the Thai style has shown dominance. It has risen to the top. Um, and it's so it's widely practiced in MMA, and MMA athletes, usually part of their curriculum it's is Muay Thai. It's basically your stand up. For okay. Yeah. But All yeah. stand up you're seeing is like Muay Thai. Yeah, okay. it's, it's very developed and uh, effective. And. and uh, yeah, in this era, it's um, super popular. They even have these national tournaments uh, like um, like baseball. It's okay. what everybody wants <laughs> to see, really. Like, I mean, MMA, UFC is very popular because of, you know, just the, the projection that they've gone and the money and production or, you know, all that. But the, the stand-up striking is what the people like to see. When it goes down to the ground, a lot of people who don't understand jiu-jitsu or, mm -hmm. you know, cage wrestling, like up mm -hmm. against the cage, um, you know, that whole style, they don't understand, so they get a little restless. They lo they want to see the standing, you know, just swinging and banging on each other. Right, they right. like They like <clears throat> that, but, um, you know, when you see, like, the, the combination... Uh, Anderson Silva, mm -hmm. you remember? Like, right, his stand-up right. was very, like, you know, kickboxing, Muay Thai. Um, obviously, he was a great ground jiu-jitsu practitioner but you know his long legs the elbows the knees um i'd say that would be a a good example for a really popular guy would be they, anderson silva not not a massive mma fan watch it um do, you know but in the time that i've watched it the progression from where the wrestling component of that mm -hmm. um has changed you certainly need to be have a wrestling component to it but Absolutely. early on, it, the wrestling, the guys that were coming out, of, especially the college wrestling guys that wrestled at the Olympic level, mm -hmm. um, those guys were pretty dominant way back in the day. Yeah. And, and that's really not the case. I've noticed that that doesn't seem to be the case. There's a component to it, but... It's not wrestling in MMA is absolutely crucial because, like, y you go up against somebody who is a wrestler and they control the whole fight. Um, but yeah, you, it's not like you had the guys who didn't. What, some people just didn't even know anything about ground games. Was and, was Poirier a wrestler? Um, he's a jiu -jitsu, He's a black belt in jiu. -jitsu, yeah, he's a jujitsu guy. I don't. His background's not wrestling though. He's a boxer. Okay. Yeah, yeah he's a pounder. Yeah. He's a stud. Justin or yeah. Dustin Poirier is. He's a stud. Sick. Yeah. That <laughs> last fight that he uh, against that French dude or Canadian, I think he was French. The French guy. That was a really good fight because he was, he uh, Dustin came in as an underdog. Right. And um, yeah, he just took that dude into deep waters into the fifth round and fucking beat his ass. No, he's uh, <laughs> he had nothing for him <coughs> any, after this. He's a stud, but you know, back at like I said, you know, I was talking about Ken Shamrock. Um, oh yeah, yeah. But Ken Shamrock, I mean, he was a all state wrestler. I mean, he was an incredibly good wrestler. Mm -hmm. And then um, who was the guy? The guy from uh, well, Lesnar was a wrestler. Yep. Um, but uh, Brock. I guess 
Yeah, well, he was just a physical freak. Um, <laughs> yeah. Dude, I mean. So, well, he did a lot of steroids before he, he got into a, UFC. Yeah, <laughs> I'm little, pretty sure they let him do it for yeah, a while. There's a, there's a little juice there, no doubt about that. Yeah. <laughs> Tell but, us the Ken, Ken uh, Shamrock story. You got into uh, it a little earlier. So you <laughs> where did you, you grew well, up in? Susanville. Susanville. Little, little town about 80 miles north of Reno. My, so my claim to fame is I got my ass kicked by Ken Shamrock. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you guys said, oh, you got in a fight with Ken Shamrock? I said, no, 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 no. I said, I got my ass kicked by Ken Shamrock. <laughs> Those are two wildly different things. And hey, what year was that? Do you remember? Oh, God. This is probably like 1981, 82. Oh, damn. So he was probably like he, training and stuff, you know. Yeah, like I said, at that time, I think I think Ken might be a year or two younger than me. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, like I said, his his dad, Ken Shamrock Sr., had a uh, – he ran a facility for troubled youth back in the day. And I, and I think – I don't know for a fact, but I think Ken and Frank were both adopted by Ken Sr. Okay. <coughs> and I, met, so. I met Frank. Um, he came up and trained at our gym in the 90s. Okay. Uh, him and a team of his guys from the Lion Den. Guy Metzger okay. uh, was pretty successful. Uh, uh, but, yeah, those guys were crazy. They were doing some WWF moves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> suplex you. Yeah, they yeah, were, yeah, they were I mean, crazy. He re- you know, Kenny, re- he wrestled at last in college. And, and, like I said, he was a legit collegiate wrestler. He, w- he was a stud. Um, so I mean, when he went to the when MMA, and that was the infancy of MMA. I mean, I think his first couple of fights, they had gloves. I think it was, yeah, I they were one kicking, They class. were kicking each other in the nuts, and like, yeah, they. I think the only thing you weren't allowed to do was eye gouge, but you could do everything else. Yeah, yeah. it was the Wild Wild West for sure. Yeah, remember they banned it. They banned it, and it went away. And then they had to redraw up the rules with with. You know the glove and the weight class and, and oh, everything else. I didn't know. I, I didn't know that's how it went. They like it. Ban- it was actually banned for a, a bit, and then they had to yeah. restructure some stuff, huh? Um, yeah, they even changed the name. You know, like uh, they used to write it completely out: Ultimate oh. Fighting Championship. And yep. Then, yeah, I was just uh, listening to something on it, but uh, you know what? Not not to go too deep into it, but I'm happy to see in the modern era the return to boxing and. Uh, Basic boxing is shining so bright at the high level, and these are million-dollar fights. And I've been talking about that a lot as well. Is um, there's guys messing around at the PMT in the amateur level, and then there's these other guys. These other guys are doing this for millions of dollars. They, you know, this is this is serious business. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, which the one, strategy, I'm specific? talking about any high-level fighting. Mm-hmm. The strategy that's being used in the ring, they're not just guessing at it. No. Um, and it's not the fighter, uh, most of the time, that's bring, drafting up his own strategy. The old trainers that train mm-hmm. the fighter, mm-hmm. it, that's the guy. He's the mastermind behind the million-dollar so, game plan. So what's your over, over-under on Jake Paul dying? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know. I I'm I worried mean, to more be completely about Mike honest, Tyson. To, to be, be completely honest, honest I, I stopped, oh, no I, way, stopped dude. I stopped looking at it. It looked like a hoax, you know. It, uh, it, it, the last look, couple of fights in uh, Tyson's 56 years old. I'll give you that. Yeah. Okay, but looking at some of his, have you seen some of the footage of him training? Yeah, it yeah, looks good. I have. I, I just I put it back against like the Roy Jones Jr. fight. You know, like it was just you watched it and you were like, eh. and the Anderson Silva and Jake fight. Jake Paul, man, he is not a. Remember, he fought Anderson Silva. Slug. Uh, who? Jake Paul. Oh, yeah. And yeah. He dropped him. And, ju- and Anderson Remember, Silva. It, it looked like they were sparring. It, it, me and Justin can go spar like that. I, I'll yeah. let Justin clip me. Yeah. And I'll. Okay, yeah. I did not see that, but I mean, look, like I said, Tyson's 56 years old. Definitely on the back nine. Okay, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Jake Paul is not, you know, like I said, he's pretty pretty yoked dude. Um, he's got some skills, mm-hmm. but I just don't think that you put him in a ring with a guy like, that, like Tyson that he's ever seen that before. Right. He's yeah. gonna. Uh, they're gonna get in there and move around and. Uh, but but yeah. b- back to the, the Jake's gonna be back light. to the 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 real deal. You know the 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 Terrence Crawford, the uh, Sean O'Malley, mm-hmm. the um, the uh, the Naganu knockout. Um, but even the Jake Paul point. Um, Who's the best pir- fighter right now, pound for pound, in the world, in your opinion? Canelo. I would say um, Tawan Chai. Tawan Chai. I would say Tawan Chai. Okay. Yeah. And and he might have been he he's been in my top Ooh, five. Nico's pretty good. He's been in my too. top five for the last five years, you know, uh, uh Tawan Chai. Uh, what about that little that young ta- white dude, the, the, the he's like sixteen you've posted uh, of him? He's hell young. Joseph probably Yes, Joseph. But, but yeah. the, those are up and comers. But what I was talking about with the resurgence and the the 
the strategy, the coaches that are writing the strategies for these million dollar world championship fights, they're going back to focusing on basic boxing. And uh, a lot of guys are lacking even basic jabbing skills. Um, and then when you put the little MMA glove on, which they're doing in Muay Thai also, they're not using boxing gloves in these high prize fights all mm -hmm. the time. They're putting the little arrows on. So the jab becomes a knockout weapon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, and, and then the game of inches and fractions. It's like old bare knucky style too. With mm -hmm. the bare hand, the game changes. And then a lot of guys, they don't even have amateur golden glove level boxing skills, but they're fighting for a UFC world title. Um, and, and the Jake Paul argument at the beginning was him calling out MMA athletes and exposing their level of boxing. Which okay. they're not boxers, right? But they ha they're supposed to have boxing skills. But that's being shown I in the mixed rules fights, whether mm -hmm. it be Muay Thai or MMA, that basic boxing at a high level is very effective in mm -hmm. knocking guys out. Yeah, just the uh, basic jab, basic right hand, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. Uh, 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 I mean the, the jab, the, gr the ground game. Uh, if you've been in MMA for a while and you're at a, a professional level, you have ground game. Who but, do, but do you have boxing game? Who are the brothers from Stockton? Legends, the um, Diaz yeah. brothers. Yeah, those guys are boxers, right? Uh, well, they're jujitsu jiu guys, mm -hmm. and but boxers. highly skilled boxers. Yes, and yeah. uh, um, and and proudly represent that uh, style of boxing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, me and them are actually close. Um, my brother used to go and spar with them at Caesar Gracie's in Concord. Okay, and then uh, Nick and Nate used to come up here to Navarone's, the uh, gym I used to manage. Okay, and. Uh, those guys used to spar with our fighters, small world. But um, those guys are uh, some of the main cycling influencers in martial arts, like yeah. what I was talking to you about. Right, right. They and, were the guys and, that got it going. In my relationship with cycling and endurance sports uh, and, and trying to advocate to these guys, they've been doing that for the, – the, 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 So they cycle a bunch. They did yeah, the – big they, cyclists. They, they did wow. the Alcatraz. The X and everything. Oh, no yeah, dude, they did the yeah. Alcatraz triathlon. Like Mount uh, Diablo riders. Yeah, and they'll show up. they got the Speedo, you know. Uh, uh, it, it's killer, and it's killer for mm. the, the uh, MMA. It's killer for the young martial artists to see this. Okay. That, that endurance sports is awesome, that it's, it's hardcore, it's good um, – I, and they're, they, they've been promoting it for, for years. They should show it more. I think they were sponsored by Trek. N Nick swam across the f to fucking Alcatraz three well, that was, times. Well, that, that's the triathlon, right? I don't know. Or is it just the swim? The, he, I know he has done this swim f like three times. Some, some crazy amount of times. Like, he, some like the amount of times that people have just died in he, shark attacks on that. Oh, and yeah. He just... You know, the it's I don't even know. It's like a you mile. Know, you you, you got to give those guys mad props. And anytime you can get Conor McGregor not to insult one of his old oppo opponents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and he has nothing but respect for the Diaz brothers. Yeah. I mean, he just openly th those are th those guys are fighters. Those are good people. No shit. And, yeah. and, and like I said, Conor doesn't do that a lot. Yeah. They're fun. They're fun to watch. Nick is uh, or Nate it was definitely fun to watch as coming up as a uh, in my 20s. There, yeah, there's something else. I like how they did it their way, you know. They they <laughs> smoking a blunt at the fucking. They didn't kiss any ass, and you know they got kicked the out of the release. UFC for a long time. They and then they're so loved that they came back, and you know they're they're Hall of Famers. Yeah, it's, Nick got screwed. They, yeah, yeah, he got screwed. Yeah. But both, I mean, both those guys. I don't know that there was ever any fighters that could take a beating the way those guys could take a beating, and put and and give a ride back because those guys took some punishment. Yeah, that's Heck that yeah. old old toughness yeah um, tough tough some bitches stocked in toughness yeah um boxing return of it so ron uh grand canyon yeah I was trans canyon pipeline trans canyon pipeline we uh so gse construction the company that i'm a project manager for we are a subcontractor on the project a company called stronghold engineering out of southern california is the general and so we are replacing the uh trans canyon pipeline so it was put in in the 60s for the time frame it was put in, it was an incredible piece of engineering, um, but it's out, it's outlasted. It's it's useful lifespan. Um, it breaks all the time. It's old aluminum pipe, mm -hmm. because in the '60s that you know the, the helicopters they used look like the helicopters you see on Mash, right? Big plexiglass bubble. <clears throat> and they'd hold you know they could probably do 500 pounds of capacity. Okay. So, um, it, like I said, it is it's reached its its end of life for that, and so they're replacing it. 
Um, it's going to change the configuration a little bit. Right now, that pipeline grabs water at a place called Roaring Springs at about the 7,500-foot level of the north rim. Okay. And then it comes down um, uh, the Bright Angel, or no, that's not Bright Angel. It is Bright Angel Trail. So it parallels the Bright Angel Trail, comes down, and then goes across the uh, Colorado River right there. And then it, it, with the head, with that much head velocity, okay, head is water pressure is just simply how much elevation divided by 2.31. And that's going to tell you how many PSI you can and how far you can push it up the other side. Okay. Mm. So it's going sh- straight down. All the way the, down. All the way down. Across, across, we gotta, across we gotta the see river. this thing. Chris, can you pull this thing up? And, and how? The uh, Trans Canyon Pipeline. How much? How, how high up does it go with that pressure so when from the, coming when, down? When, the, when that pipeline gets to the bottom of the canyon at Phantom Ranch, um, it's about 1,100 PSI is the pressure on that pipeline. Okay, again, you've got all that because the, the Phantom Ranch is about 25, 2,700 feet. So you're going from 7,500 feet to 2,700 feet mm-hmm. divided by 2.31. And that'll tell you if it's about 10, uh, you know, it's, it's about... A thousand psi. I'm glad you did that math for me. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So it's <laughs> super, super simple, right? Okay. Um, super simple. <coughs> easy um, math. It is easy math. <laughs> so you do it as long as I've done it. It's pretty easy math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this thing is massive, right? How long is it? Uh, so the the existing pipeline right now. Let's see what you got on the video right here. Man, this what rugged like terrain, man! That can't be really easy to navigate through, right? No, everything we do is with uh, we do everything with a, it involves a helicopter or walking. Chris, you might be able to go like on Google and get like a, a more of like a like a s- yeah. So this this I've seen this video right here. And it's actually pretty good. Oh, and is it? It is actually okay. pretty good. It's a it's a little long, yeah. But uh, so that's Roaring Springs right there. That's where they're getting water. That for the uh, that's the entire you know South Rim the national uh, Grand Canyon National Park. All that water comes off the North Rim. And where is the source of that? <laughs> it's called Roaring Springs. Okay, so it's spring water. Yeah, it is spring water. It comes okay. out, and then um, so like I said, the pipeline. There you go. So you can see the that's the existing pipeline that is there. It's been there since, like I said, I think it was sixty two, and they finished in sixty six, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong on those dates, but it's been there for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, it was all aluminum pipe because that was the they couldn't have anything real heavy. They couldn't get it in there, so they did all aluminum with what's called a Victolic coupling, and it, like I said, for when they put that in, it's an engineering marvel. Really, super impressive. Um, but it's time to replace it. So they're going to reconfigure it now. They're no longer going to take water from Roaring Springs. What Roaring Springs does now is it dumps into Bright Angel Creek. Mm-hmm. That's the source, and the Bright Angel goes all the way down to the Colorado. So we're going to put in a new intake structure at Phantom Ranch at the bottom of the canyon. We're going to grab that water. We're going to treat some of that water for Phantom Ranch. It, Phantom Ranch is a major pullout for the rafters. Um, the through hikers that go rim to rim go okay. right through Phantom Ranch. Okay. So it's kind of a hub in the canyon in, in the park. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to, and then we will pump it up to what's called Havasupe Gardens. It used to be called Indian Gardens. Now it's called Havasupe Gardens. Okay. And then Havasupe will grab it. See, there you go right there. So there's mm-hmm. Roaring Springs right yeah, there. Yeah, press pause right there. Okay, so. So, so North, R- North Rim is about 1,000 feet higher than South Rim. Um, and where's the, ma- when you come in from, like, the highway that's from south, California, south rim. you go to the South Rim. You go to the South Rim. And that's the major attraction. That there, is right? the main, that's the national, well, North Rim's National Park, too, but South Rim is the major tourist attraction, for lack of a better term. Much more developed. Uh, north Rim is very, very rustic and remote. Okay. Okay. So you can see right there, it comes down. It's ju- just gravity all the way to the bottom. You the bridge right there where you see it coming down, that's Phantom Ranch. Okay. So Phantom Ranch has got some cabins. Um, there's a, there's actually a little store down there where you can get a beer and a steak. Oh, cool. Um, and then gravity pushes it up the other side as you continue across the bridge. It's actually, you can see the pipeline. I can't remember the name of the bridge. Um, so Indian Gardens right there, and this is an old video. That's now Havasupe Gardens. Okay. okay. Havasupe, you're kind of out of head pressure to push it up. So you they pick it up with booster pumps and pump it over the rim. Okay. Okay. Wow. And what's the how, the booster pumps? Like how how large of an area is that? Is that like a pretty they're not, substantial? They're, act, they're not that actually. You know, we put bigger ones in all the time. Um, I just did a flood control project in West Sacramento that we put in 300 horse um, flood control pumps. Mm-hmm. 300 horse, the 36 inch line is a lot of water. Okay. Okay. Yeah. These are small, but the the issue you have here is you're overcoming high pressure because of the elevation because you're gaining elevation. Right. So, do you have to have multiple? <clears throat> At stages? No, they, um, that, the, those pumps are, I think those p- pumps are going to be 500 horse pumps, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and again, we, we're not doing that portion of the work, that's SEIs. Okay. Um, so 
those are, I think, are 500, but they're pretty small. They're called a split case pump, small diameter pump, mm -hmm. and they just create a lot of pressure. Got it. Okay. And so that pumps it over the top, and then that water will come to us at South Rim where we're, we're building a new water treatment facility. Mm -hmm. um, because as it, the canyon right now, all of their water comes out of Roaring Springs. They dose it with sodium hypochlorite disinfectant, mm -hmm. okay, and that is potable water. It goes out for distribution, Phantom Ranch, South Rim, everywhere in the park, that's the water you're drinking. Okay. okay. Yep. What we're putting in is is would be comparable to a municipal treatment system that you would see in the city of Folsom or something. Hmm. Small smaller in the amount of water we're treating, but every bit is as detailed as far as nanofiltration, um, you know, just the, the steps we go through to give them a high quality potable potable water. Okay. Nice. And and how does that um how has this been navigated through the U.S. government and so that, the that project, Native American that uh, project, lands? That project has been, it was in design for 12 years. Um, uh, engineering firm called HDR is the uh, lead engineer on it. That is their design. And the permitting process with the Park Service and, and the various Native American tribes, Hopi, Navajo, and I believe there's two others, I think, that actually have um, uh, some say in what goes on in the park. Mm -hmm. So the permitting process and, and just the design of this thing was a 12 year process. Wow. Um, there are people, it'll take us about three, three and a half years to build it. So that's going to put it at the 16 year mark. That's crazy. There are people <laughs> that will look at this with the chopper. Yeah, so that's what and I yeah. you got, And you guys do most of the work with the choppers, yeah? Yeah, but see, the choppers. Oh, there's are, the old ones. There's the choppers you're using back when they built this thing. Holy so shit, look some, at that. So some of that equipment is actually it's still sitting in a laydown yard over on the rim. Oh, that's so cool. And um, like I said, for when they built this, what they did, it was it was super impressive. That looks like them blasting out China Wall up in Donner. <laughs> I so, mean, yeah, so, that's just see, the, look, the look, crazy look, amount look, of work that they did back then. Look at those then. tools. I mean, that is hard work, you guys. I mean, like, I say, you know, crawl, I got to crawl around in a freaking attic or, a ba you know, under a house, and I'm, like, complaining. This is another level. This is a way. This is, like, li don't, life or death. Like, don't, don't mess up. Don't you mess up on the job on this one, Jay. <sighs> so we. I'd definitely be fired so, from this job. So <laughs> Every, oh my God! Every I mean, and there are parts of the of the, of the pipeline that are not in trench, as you can see. They're actually anchored to the to the side of the canyon wall. Oh wow! And that's okay. still in use right there. It's still in use, and they're actually going to they're going to use that, and they need a good portion of that all the way from South Rim down to Havasupai Gardens, a slip line. So they put a pipe inside a pipe. In other words, they pulled new pipe into the old pipe as, yeah. a, as like a conduit. Sure. Yep. Um, just because it was so, it was way too difficult to try to replace it. The Grand Canyon is crazy. Uh, yeah, I, I went there once when I was a kid. We were moving to California from Texas, or we were moving back, and we drove through the South, painted desert, Grand Canyon, and uh, I remember we thought we were gonna see it. We were, we were kids in the car, and we thought, you know, this thing's huge. Like we're gonna dr be driving and be able to see it. And we were driving through these woods, and we didn't see shit. Yeah, and, and then all of a sudden. Boom! We come up on this thing, and it's just this huge. Oh no, you don't see it coming. You yeah, can't, I mean, and you can't you're take it all in. in. Trees. Yeah, yeah, I think that's where my uh, vertigo started. Because <laughs> <laughs> you down. look out, you look out. It's, and it's so long. You can't measure it. No, not you know, at all. You're the, right. The, the distance. Your eyeometer uh, doesn't work. And then, uh, what about the skywalk? So the the skywalk is actually not part of the national park. That is, um, and I don't know what, exactly which tribe owns that. Um, that is a, uh, a for-profit uh, tribal entity that they put together. Um, obviously, the, I, th I believe that the Department of Interior had to sign off on it, um, but I don't think it's actually in the park boundary. It, and it, how high is it? Who I, owns that, Chris? Who owns the Skywalk? I, I saw something on it the Luke other day. Skywalker? A guy fell from the Skywalk. What? He, well, he didn't well, fall. Well, <laughs> that's a what, Russian no, you know. threw him off the fucking Skywalk? And, and, uh, yeah, they had people up there. You know, it, it's like a glass floor and yeah what a dive yeah that's um I, I that would be a cool one to go to i wish we would have went to that my i went when i went there three years back i went and took the the beer delivery van that's the one that the one yeah. that's in like a u-shape yeah is, is that it yep yeah yeah so we took the beer van to arizona all around arizona nevada and like through uh, some death valley and stuff like that and my my brother and i in 2021 and just took our stimulus checks and threw some threw some mattresses in the back of the van and then took off for like five days it was super fun 700 so 720 feet uh -huh. oh, the 
uh, okay. Hula pie? Hula, uh, hula pie. Hula pie. Hula pie. Yeah, that's got to be such an interesting, you know, like I either I knew you were going to like kind of know some of, something about it or, you know, not really, you know, I think it wouldn't gra- be your di- jurisdiction, but, you know, like there's so much that whole area of native native american land and the and the us government and doing anything on there and water rights and building i cuz I, when i was there the tram um was being talked about being built and there was a lot of you know obviously controversy on the tram from the from the south rim down to the bottom you know i mean i basically you know the way my schedule is right now i live in arizona and i and i I visit California because I'm there for eight days and I come home for six days. Uh huh. Um, you know, it's it, it's like all of our stuff gets loved to death, right? Mm-hmm. And the Grand Canyon is one of those things that it just kind of gets loved to death. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, talking, we have a fair number of Navajo guys on that are on different crews, called Rebar Crew and some other. And talking to those guys, there's a lot of resentment, man. They don't they don't like the way. For the, for lack of a better term, Whitey runs runs the Grand Canyon. They're mm. not they're not stoked on it. Yeah, um, and they've got some really valid points. I, um, I, yeah, <laughs> you know they really do. I, yes, they actually absolutely do. They, super valid points. And the more like I mean Yellowstone, um, the eight eight nineteen twenty seven or whatever that one was, the nineteen twenty one, that was crazy. I didn't like that was history that I had never even. I mean the fact that we're getting it from like a Hollywood you know show is um you know what what is the accuracy but i mean i i'm, I'm assuming it's pretty accurate the, but the, like the, the camps that they had like the catholic camps you know they'd have oh like, yeah yeah you yeah know, they just round up a bunch of kids and you know from take them straight from the house but you know anyways all, all that kind of crazy shit but um but yeah i mean uh, you know they they probably uh look would at, like to have a say look at the erosion i mean you're pumping water. They're building a water pipe. But you know okay, what? You see the, oh. Okay, so he's, when he's turn, when they're turning on those valves, because the pressure's so high, normally you could walk up to that's called a, that's called a uh, just a standard gate valve. Okay, you just walk up and turn the wheel, right? And not there, you don't. I mean, you gotta have a cheater bar, and you know, because the pressures are so freaking high. Yeah. And when they, it, the system is so old and antiquated now. Whenever they open and close valves, they do it super slowly because every time they do it, <laughs> something breaks. Something freaking breaks. Yeah. You oh, don't want to let all that pressure go That's right dangerous. at once. It's like turning on all the breakers at once. But yeah, we used to always talk about the erosion, and the Grand Canyon was always a, a um, an example of that. You know, you know what I mean, Justin. I mean, the, the, the whole water, thing was just in a, like it started well, with a freaking creek through it, right? Well, it's, it's the water thing. Be like water. Oh, um, it's the it's the Bruce Lee thing, mm-hmm. and the water drips from your gutter and causes and erosion. cracks your driveway concrete. Yeah, and that's kind of the martial art method, you right? Know? It's right. the and but then look at this. Yeah, <laughs> look at the erosion on this. Look at that drip. Yeah. Holy crap! <laughs> 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 like, like, like I was telling you guys, um, and, and I do, all, all you people that, that live around the Grand Canyon and think it's awesome, I think it's by far our most boring national park. <laughs> I thought the same thing. I was like, dude, there's no way that this is the like top of the list on national parks. Like, I'm missing something. It really looks deadly. Everybody that I talked to said, the, you got to go to the by, bottom. By though. far, the more the most fa- fatalities in any of the national park are in the Grand Yeah, because motherfuckers are walking yeah. over the gate. Yeah. I, I saw it myself. This guy went to go take a fucking selfie. Uh, he like walked over the ledge and I'm like, don't do this, dude. Don't, don't do this. Like I even turned around. I was like, I'm not going to tell him what to do. Cause I don't give a fuck, you know, go ahead and die. But I turned around cause I was like, I don't want to watch you fall. That's, that's just it. Like, so if you go, <laughs> if you, if you stand, so 64 is the highway that comes out of, it comes off of 40 right there by Flagstaff Williams. Yeah. Yeah. So 64 is the main entrance into the park. Yep. If you stand, just tees straight so up. So if you stand 64, it actually exits the park and goes down that there's some reservations down there. Cameron, um, the Navajo reservations, but Anyway, you're still in the park, and you're par- and it's 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 a little lesser scene. It's not the the village. It's a little off the beaten path. Mm-hmm. There's one zone over there where it's kind of a thing where people drive cars and motorcycles off that that particular part of the canyon to to you know just to final, finish it off, kind of final farewell. And it, it's a thing, you know. And so um, we're because because what we do, we're helicopters all the time. Yeah. And so we're very in tune with what the park service is doing as far as, cause they have their own helicopter. Right. Um, so you guys are com- in communication yeah, quite can, a bit because like the sightseeing helicopters aren't allowed to fly into the, into the Canyon. They have to stay above the rim, stay a thousand feet above the rim. 
just so they're um, not interfering with other people. Like well, you've got the Park Service, which is a search and rescue helicopter, and they use it for getting people to and from Phantom Ranch, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, S- Stronghold uh, Engineering has all of the helicopter operations on this, and then so Stronghold flies us. We have a crew of six down there right now. They fly down Thursday morning. They're down there Thursday morning. They fly out the following Thursday. Um, and then all of our – I showed you guys a video earlier of the batch plant. Um, that was a Chinook. So we had, we've had a Chinook there for probably eight days total. Okay. And that's probably anywhere between 13 to 18 flights a day. And that's excavators where we have to take excavators apart to fly them. We have to get them below about 18,000 pounds. Okay. So we have to take them apart, take the stick, take the boom off, take tracks off, and take the counterweight off of them. Wow. How many? So, so how many <laughs> trips does it take to take one? Like I don't, uh, I don't know what the th- average. Three thirteen we brought down there was. Let's see, it was a trip for the the skeleton of the machine. It was a, uh, we we left the boom and the stick in one piece. That was the second trip. Counterweight was the third trip. It took four trips to get that excavator to the bottom. How much is that? Would you say just in dollar wise? Yeah, that's got to be. Oh, I think that thing. And well, it costs that the Chinook costs it. It costs two hundred fifty grand just to get it there. Okay, just to get it there. J- just to fly it there, not like... It's based in Idaho, so they fly down from Idaho, and, and just to get it there is 250 grand. Damn, just just to get it there. Holy crap. Wow. Okay, and then that, they're probably, I don't know, 40K an hour? Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, this the, is a costly... Well, it was $208 million, is that what? That's what $208 was, million, dollars, and yeah, with change orders, projected. it'll probably be somewhere in the vicinity... A four million ten no, four hundred and ten million. You f- you figure two you, you know, ten percent on change orders is always a pretty good reasonable, you know, depending on how good the design is. Uh-huh. Um, yep. and and HDR did a good job on this one, so I, I would think it's gonna be anywhere from five to ten percent in change orders. So okay. you know, it's gonna put it in the two fifty range when it's all said and done. Yeah. I, I don't think they'll go that high. Um but uh it's uh it's just Damn, what no- is that? <laughs> nothing simple. Nothing everything we do is <laughs> Thelma and Louise. Thelma, Thelma and Louise <laughs> sending it. So I, everything we do is is it's it, 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 it the construction's not hard. It's no different than building a water treatment plant in Roseville. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's it's a logistical problem. Right. It's the it, it's, te- the area that you're in. It, I mean, if you say, "Oh man, we're out of sixteen penny nails," you're not going to go to Home Depot. Yeah. It's I mean, all, it, on the rim, it's bad the because scale, you got to go to Flagstaff. The scale and what you guys are doing with the equipment is awesome. Uh, uh, I worked around um, some shipping I- industrial warehousing and you know, working with cranes and uh, trailers and trucks and uh, I would love to see what you guys are doing with this stuff uh, yeah it's a uh, you know we've got spider cone we've you know flew a concrete batch plant down there I'm um, making concrete okay well I can't I can't call Semex and say hey I need 10 yards of concrete we got to make it yeah. yep so we have to bring in all the raw materials and it's structural engineered concrete so we've got to go through the process of having Super sacks made of, of we call it the batter, which is the Portland cement, the sand, all the, any of the admixtures that are in the mix, mm-hmm. and then the aggregate goes down. So, and we've got to we make concrete. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. So, and so you have the whole facility. Like when you go go pick up some at United had, Rentals, like right. you got the whole thing yeah, there. Like I said, you, um, we we had a line. We flew a line pump down there. Um, wow, it's advanced so. problem solving. Yeah, that's probably pretty cool to 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 see all that, man. I mean, it's like it, you know, th- I've I've done what I do for a living for a long time, and and you know, if you tell me, you know, hey, go build another ten million gallon tank, yeah, whatever. You know, I mean, that's it's awesome. just yeah, I'll do it. You know, as long as there's enough zeros on the check, I'll do anything. Absolutely. Right? But it's boring. Um, Is it? Oh yeah, th- that's really boring. It, it just give me something where you make me think. Well, we've like done this. some. Pro- Is Ron, this the thing? How much are you liking yeah. this? Yeah. I like the pro- I like the process a lot. I don't, I'm not super keen on being in Arizona as much as I am. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, traveling yeah. at your age got to suck being gone. In that Arizona, I mean, Arizona is like the moon. <laughs> it, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's like Mars. It is. It really is. It really it's is. crazy when you see the red rocks. It's yeah. like, I mean, Sedona. When I went to Sedona, I was in awe. Like it really like cactus. Gra- I kind of gravitated towards it. I was like, I could live here, man. This is so pretty. I, you know, growing up in Susanville, it's high desert, so I I, I appreciate the high desert. Mm-hmm. Um, and and Arizona at that, you know, you're seven thousand feet on South Rim. Yeah. Um, you're you're about eighty five hundred feet on North Rim. So I mean, it's high desert. It's fucking cold. I was there in January. Oh, it was it's hella cold. Fucking yeah, so the layers of rocks really cool to see. Like when you go f- from Flagstaff down into Sedona. If you get a chance, go to the the geological museum in the canyon at the park. Oh, that um, would have been a cool one. Where they start walking you through what is the, what this sedimentary layer is and and time frame and yeah. this layer and this layer and this layer. Um, but on South Rim, everything you know, it's not you're not digging in in rock. Okay, you're digging a rock. It's one big effing rock. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So all of our trenches are done with a rock trencher. Uh-huh. You know, we're used to getting 300 to 500 feet a day if we're doing, you know, water line, right? 
there, man, you, you get 100 feet and you're happier than a pig in shit. I mean, Jeez. you're stoked. Are you guys blowing shit up, too? No, no, we, we can. We, we actually, in the specification, we can blast. But um, when you're trenching, it's kind of counterproductive. Mm. Um, you know, Vermeer, Neckleck, there's a comp- you know, some companies that are making some really good rock trenchers now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they do an unbelievable job through solid rock. It's solid rock. What what uh, what company makes this i want to see what what it vermeer vermeer um, yeah vermeer nine like that see there's that's a rock. oh that's damn. actually a Look rock that's Dude, a rock jamie that, vernon on it that's a rock saw right there okay so so if you're putting like a conduit in the ground that's applicable but when we're putting in you know 12 inch water line yeah um, that's not going to work so we we use a rock trencher so put that in, is a huge, put in vermeer uh huge. vermeer 1055 i want to run that i know huh let me let me operate that. Let me trench my I got new. A, I got a perfect safety record. <laughs> I actually only broke one pipe when I uh, just trenched out that hole. So that's to. yeah, there. That's a ten fifty five right there. That's what we use for uh, Vermeer equipped the, to do more. This is what we do for. Yep, there it is. Whoa! What the fuck, <laughs> dude? Imagine getting railed by that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Man, that's the kind of shit that turns my on girlfriend that. on. <laughs> so that that is exact that trench right there looks exactly like a Grand Canyon trench right there. You don't have the best part is you don't have to use any shoring because it's solid effing rock. Dude, that's a machine. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. So I mean, uh, I feel bad for the guys that have to run those things because I mean, uh, you, it's you, slow. I bet. Well, right. See, you see what's coming off the belt, right? And, uh-huh. and he's he's kicking ass right there. That's pretty good. You know, you they they get to the teeth on them, get tired, and it's like. This little str- you know, like trail of sawdust coming off there—it's like that's oh, really yeah. depressing. It's all just oh, because then it, you're like shit. I'm gonna be here for a while because you know you're hitting just rock. Well, it's just your teeth are wore out, or you know, and and, and how and often do you have to replace that? The, you, the teeth? You, you inspect it every day. At the end of the day, they they get a, bring a welding rig out and they do put weld down for hard facing all the wear parts. Uh huh. And then they inspect the teeth and then they'll replace teeth as as needed. Yep. It's just a constant rotation. So. A company called Grand Canyon Shooters. We actually subbed that uh, the, the rock trenching out to them, mm-hmm. and uh, they uh, uh, there's a guy that comes in every day after you know the trencher runs all day. Guy comes in at the end of the day and it just starts doing maintenance on it because they they just beat themselves to death by nature. I mean, t- t- yeah, you're just running through rock. You know, you can't help it. Nothing can withstand that too long. High mileage. So, High mileage. Yeah, High bet. mileage. Is that a Toyota? Time is money. Got to get the got to get the bit sharp. Yep. Uh, um, Ron, do you ever see anything crazy in the Grand Canyon? Uh, Have you ever seen anything odd? No, not not, not really, not yet. You know, the day is young. You give it a chance. Um, we did. They found some human remains down at Phantom Ranch. Oh, turned out to be a. Uh, um, I think it was Hopi. I think it was Hopi, and uh, the remains were over a thousand years old. Um, oh wow! So that caused a bit of a shit storm, as you can yeah. imagine. <laughs> I bet, right? Yeah, that, like that's different that's artifacts and stuff. Uh, but what about like any uh, paranormal activity? <laughs> you, you know, my job's pretty high stress, and, and so normally it's like freaking work till six o'clock, eat something real fast, maybe get a bike riding if it's not cold as balls, and uh, go to bed. So you, you, know, you, might you wouldn't s- notice. Yeah, I you wouldn't, yeah. Uh, you wouldn't notice. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, what about the Thunderbird? I, I do, you know, I mean, I've seen it. I've, you know, I know, I know of it. I've actually read a bit about it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, what? You know what? I I have a couple friends. Um, I had a student, and she ended up being an archaeologist. Uh huh. And they live in the south west right and um they excavate all these sites um and i'm always asking them because the thunderbird you never heard of the, you know the car yeah i know the car that's what i thought you were the thunderbird's a legend oh. and it's a, a a legend that's passed through the uh, american indian tribes like uh, many tribes sh- share this uh, this legend of the thunderbird okay yeah you know? i know i've never i've See, never that's heard why it. i think there's probably uh, not probably there's possibly something very real about it because it's not a single tribe that talks about the Thunderbird. Right, right. It's multiple tribes, predominantly all the tribes in the Southwest. Really, that is part of their belief system is the Thunderbird. And no, is it? And it's, an a bir- it's an actual bird. It's an actual bird that t- it would take children and stuff. Correct. Yeah, and uh, also the the tribes weren't communi- They weren't communicating. Correct. So, and, and then you have different stuff like that in, in right. other religions as well. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, before these people were communicating, but they have these same stories that's interesting you know and yeah the thunderbird's an interesting one even so interesting they made a, a two-seater 
<laughs> uh, well, with a, with made, a port window. They made a, f- a Ford coupe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, when you look at, like, it, it, totem poles. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. Typically at the top of the totem pole, you, the bird. The bird? That's a thunderbird. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I always thought it was, like, an eagle or something. And it's no. like a, a, a hieroglyph that you, you might come across. Like, yeah. if you're going into these areas, sometimes you see them painted. I, can th- I, I, I see the, yeah, that little emblem. So, if you want to, like... The, the, if you the paranormal stuff, you want to really spin your head, start start looking at Sky, uh, Skinwalker Ranch. Skinwalker Ranch in Nevada. Okay, th- th- that'll that'll make. Why does that sound? Well, you just figure that'll that'll make you think. It's such a um, powerful place, and then you know, with all the the different peoples in the Southwest, and you know, uh, uh, there, there's there's got to be the the graveyards and the spirits. Oh, no doubt from there's the old like days. The, the Indian graveyards where you can't go into like a certain area. Yeah, you like, might don't come you go ride your horse that there? You're gonna die. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm I, not I'm not a person that scares easy, but man, if you're out in the middle of the Nevada desert by yourself, it's like, it's just a heavy feeling, dude. It's eerie. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it those is. hot spring areas out there, that, you humbling. Know, you can just be. I, I felt that a few times. Uh, on the mountain, I felt that, uh, and then on the ocean. Uh, well, I think it, you know, for me, it's a, f- a feeling in, of insignificance. In, in that landscape, ocean, uh, you know, Sierras, we get into desolation or any of the, in the big wilderness areas. Mm-hmm. Man, you are in. in it, you don't matter. Yeah. You are insignificant. Right. Yeah. And you're really. You're really. You're out only there. lucky because you have your life straw. Correct. <laughs> Otherwise, Correct. you would be dead. In yeah. I mean, a matter you are of no consequence to anything going on there. Yeah, I used to um, help, help race sailboats when I was a teenager in the Bay Area, out into the uh, out into the Pacific. And when you would get out where you couldn't see land, it would make you f- and on a sailboat also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not you're not really a big sitting on the water, and then the water changes when you leave the Golden Gate. Like you can feel, you can sense the depth, uh, mm-hmm. the the even the size of the 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 waves and. and uh, yeah, it's immeasurable. It, it, it's humbling. Well, I mean, you taught you t- were talking about you know people that need that adrel- adrenaline rush, and and you know, I mean, the guys that surf Mavericks. I mean, there's a book of uh, Mavericks called Mavericks. It was written by the guy that writes for the Chronicle. Um, it is, it, it's it's an easy read, and, and those man, that is a different breed. Those those cats, it, it is so much different now. I mean, because now they're you know they're being towed in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Before, when these guys were paddling in, it's. Have you ever? Do you surf at all? Have you? No, done no, 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 no. I no. love yeah. it though. It's. I'm like hard. you, run. Even I've, the I've, fucking wave that's like four feet tall is hard. I've yeah. been so intrigued by surfing, and actually, I was living in uh, Pacifica. It's okay. Very, yeah, very close to Mavericks. Close to yeah. Mavericks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was gonna get into it, uh, not surfing Mavericks, but surfing, uh, period. And it was either cycling, or surfing. Uh, where I was living, because they have world class. Uh, I mean, I love trails I, up there. As I well. love the idea. I mean, I, I love the, the the surf lifestyle and how connected they are to the ocean. And 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 it, I, I swim like shit and sink like a rock. So I mean, this is not my <laughs> not jam. Yeah. Right? Yeah. you got to know your lane. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I would That's run. Shit. I would run down to the beach on my daily run, and uh, Pacifica's foggy like three hundred days a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, somehow the the you know it's perfectly set to create fog so i I would run down to the ocean and uh it'd be so foggy you could only see like five foot out into and then it was just fog and these breaking and here come these guys full wetsuit two guys two buddies and they're gonna go hit it and like you can't you can't see they just disappear it's it's super cold and there's big great white sharks i'm like these guys are awesome yeah, it's it's so what hard to sport. just get into the water when it's that cold. Well, like it, even the, this right here, I'm telling you, is fucking hard. It looks like that. And but if you foggy. fall right there and you get washed <laughs> up, you it's like it's so much momentum of water. You're like yeah. tossing well, and, around. And just, and just the way that you know Mavericks, the way they do Mavericks, right? I mean, you're just you, you're on speed dial, and when and when, and when there's a break and it's coming, right? All over the world, I mean, they you know the call goes out, and these guys show up at Mavericks and. And the guy that won it, they had it this year. I think they had a big enough swell to do it this year. Uh-huh. I think that guy's over 50 years old. He's a Mavericks legend. Oh, wow. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. The, the swell we had this year was incredible. Oh, Remember was what happened um, along the shore, Santa Cruz? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Massive battering of the coast. Oh, uh, that I do remember we, seeing at Mavericks, the Mavericks this year had huge surf break. 
And yeah, I, I like when I was living down there and I would check the weather, they would have the swell size. That's Because if you had a house on the, the, the coast, that, that would affect your house. Like if there's a high swell, you might have to bring the dog in. Yeah, yeah, you might lose your house. You might need <laughs> to right, freaking right, get, yeah. get all the photos out. <laughs> no, these. I mean, it, it's it's kind of the same thing at Jaws on 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 Maui. Mm. Um, just you know that what those guys will what they will do and the risks they take. Right, there's there's a payoff. Well, now they're going out into the middle of the ocean, like way out into like nowhere. They're just taking big ships, going out there and finding into breaks. like yeah. There's like there's these some, areas some... that have like breaks on them because they yeah. have like a bar or whatever somewhere. Seen, but they're fucking like have you seen hundred Na- foot. Have you seen the break in Nazare in Portugal? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just weird, uh, dangerous things that the ocean are doing, and we're gonna go ride that. We're gonna we're gonna pack it up and head out. Dude, that right there <laughs> is just not like. Where is he? Yeah. Where'd he go? But surfing always <laughs> felt like um, I needed an in. You know, like I didn't have anyone that could mentor me, and I was not just gonna. You know, I have more respect for the ocean. I'm not just gonna paddle out there. Uh, you don't even know where to paddle out. I mean, oh, look at damn. that. Yeah, I'm just. I'm, but I'm, I would still be interested. Maybe I'm, in my fifties. I'm a master <laughs> surfing. Yes, I, I, shit, let's go. I'm, I'm gonna I'm, grow my hair out. I'll look like Rick Rubin. <laughs> I'm a we mass- need a sponsorship <laughs> then. <laughs> I'm a weird hair. I'm surf. a massive fan of being at the top of the food chain. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I know, yeah, right? right? <laughs> don't you love being a human? It is one of the best things yeah. ever. I don't know how oh, I got so lucky. Man, a shark, a, a shark attack. I guess a dog wouldn't have been too bad. Shark so, terrifying. Ron, what's uh, what's what's on the horizon for TDS? What's like? What's the um, like what's is there any is it kind of just go year by year? We just, or? You know, we kind of we kind of always it was for, originally it was like the ten year plan. We figured ten years, ten year run, right? Uh-huh. By ten years, yeah, you know, and you were part of that that where you know it kind of got its legs and, and it became a thing. Yeah, and um, it certainly when I was there, it was like felt like you you guys had momentum and and you're... but we always kind of we always wanted to you know leave we always wanted to leave leave them want more right. In uh-huh. other words don't wait until it's not cool anymore or it's not like this bucket list item Mm -hmm. and we kind of keep waiting for that to happen (laughs) it just doesn't happen but it's it it's it's easier to put it on in the extent the infrastructure is all there Mm -hmm. um uh, casey my son now lives on he just moved to south carolina um so his wife his, his wife's from arkansas and so um uh they um she wasn't a fan of California. He wasn't a fan of Arkansas. So the the compromise is South Carolina. So um, he's not going to make it out this year, which it's certainly it makes it harder for me because I rely on him. He, I mean, he's he's me, just not jaded yet. Mm-hmm. I'm old and jaded. He's not jaded yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, it'll come. <laughs> <laughs> it you know, usually does, right? It usually does. With time, father the, time, like the we bitterness. Said. Yeah, father, <laughs> father time is undefeated. Um, it's those but, fucking uh, kids that we had, man. But, you know, we get so much help from the community. Um, again, uh, you know, Jed Colvin and my son-in-law, Justin uh, Kenworthy, mm-hmm. um, he's stepping up big time. My daughter is uh, my wife incarnate. Um, she is highly organized. Um, she actually works for Semper Fi. We do the uh, disabled athlete um, yeah. camp. So Semper Fi, she actually works for Semper Fi now. She's a... She's a uh, division manager for Semper Fi. Okay, and you so, guys are like, I, 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 were you a Marine, or are you a Marine? No, we, or uh, how did you get involved with Semper Fi we, so much? Uh, Mark Weir, my my buddy, that's the uh, retired pro mountain biker. Yep. He did a skills camp for them. He got he got to be buddies with a guy named Sam Tickle, uh, and Sam is a uh, an adapt. He runs the adaptive program for Team Semper Fi. Okay. And so their their mission statement is recovery through sport, and so they were doing you know they'll do golf and, and uh, this, uh, scuba diving, you know, just a plethora of different things that they do. And mountain biking was one of them. So they went to Mark Weir's place. He, a buddy of his has got a big ranch down in Novato. Mm-hmm. And so they did a Semper Fi camp down there. And they, they, Mark asked us to come down and help out with it. So we brought our side by side down to shuttle them and, and hung out with them. We said, hey, you know, and, and at that time, TDS was probably fifth year, maybe sixth year. Um, we said you guys should come up for TDS, and uh, we'll do do the camp up there. And so that's how we got tied into the Semper Fi fund, and started doing that. And then um, we actually have had uh, Art Beamish and, or excuse me, Ryan Beamish and Art, Art Sykes, two of the Semper Fi athletes, have raced about the last eight TDSs in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, we actually did a, an adaptive hand cycle division for a couple of the guys. Yep, um, those are cool. We just uh, we just lost one of the legends, a guy named Peter Way. Yeah, um, I saw that. Pete was, yeah, you know, um, 
uh, you know, just just a hell of a man, just a hell of a good man. And he was coming out this year, and uh, unfortunately, his his daughter, he was visiting his daughter in Colorado, and, and she went in in the morning, and he was unresponsive and had passed. And um, so, you know, we're going we're gonna to ride for Pete this year. Um, he was a incredible guy, just an incredible guy. And, he, and the guy, you know, um, his daughter's wedding, and he sends me a picture, and he's got TDS socks on, right, <laughs> under his tux. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know, so he, he, he lived TDS and he breathed TDS. And, and like I said, he, he's uh, he, it's, it, that's a tough loss. So um, we won't do the adaptive cycle division this year because we don't have enough guys to do it. Mm-hmm. But uh, there, I think we're going to have two that are going to ta- uh, uh, take part in the camp. Mm-hmm. And so they come in on Wednesday and they get professional instruction from Mark Weir, Marco Osborne. Um, there you go. Yeah, that's the, the ha- so they. Uh, they use the hand, their hands to to ride, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, it was. Um, that was quite the machine. Yeah, TDS is. Uh, it's like we, you know when you get there that there's something more to it than just a bike race. It's it's a it's it reminded. I haven't been to Burning Man, but I was like, if if Burning Man and like Red Bull Rampage had a baby together, it would be the TDS because it's just like. All the downhill carnage right, that you see right. from like the dopest fucking downhill races, but then it's in the middle of the Grass Valley Forest, which is Grass Valley is kind of like one of those like um, those vortex areas they call it, like you know Shasta or Sedona, where it's like it's kind of like a magical city. You right, know, you're just right. in the middle of the fucking mountains, and I wish there's it, just I, all the sudden. I wish it was a little less magical because everyone's been priced out of Truckee. They're yeah, all, they're yeah. all showing up in Grass Valley now. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, it was a bound to happen. The Bay Area yeah. people love it up there, but so they're gonna find it eventually. Yeah, as long as they as long as they leave the Bay Area attitude in the Bay Area. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. Totally. If they if they import the attitude, hmm, not down. Right, not down, and they will let you know in Grass Valley. Grass Valley in Nevada City was such an interesting area growing up, or uh, not growing up, but living up there for that short amount of time. When I was with the Old Republic, and you know, because I, I only grew up like an hour away, but I'd never been there, and I I don't think I really I heard about the the Christmas time the thing that they have with all the carriages, oh, Cornish Christmas, Cornish and, Christmas, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you see that, um, but yeah, you get up there and you live up there, and you see this difference between like kind of like the new folks that come up on the weekends with the flappy bill hats and they go to three forks and they hang out you know and they drive up their you know teslas and stuff and then you see like the hippie folks that have kind of moved up and lived there and then you have this old generation from like 1800s that own their own that still own their lands that still mine on their lands that are you know very much have been like you know generational miners or people that live up there and they are very apparent and they're so it's just such a weird mix of people you know it's, it's like a, a, it's eclectic i mean you got you know uh, you know strong strong yuppie contingent like you said coming up from the bay area yep. and some and new money new money and they you know and they roll in and they they want to make it like the bay area and, mm-hmm. and you know and so uh covid was like covid was the town changed so much in from in 2020 to yeah, now. Yeah, it did. It's it, damn near unrecognizable it's, and, and it's just a different attitude and it's a different vibe and and you know, look, we still, you know, we're we're fucking rednecks, right? Okay, <laughs> we shoot guns, ride motorcycles, ride dirt, you know, mountain bikes, and, and have a you know burn shit. We have a good time. Yeah, right. You burn plastic. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna confess up. <laughs> 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 no, that's illegal. <laughs> no, that is motor oil. Both of them are illegal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we don't do that. Right. Um, but you know, um, they just you know they, they 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 lots of encounters where they they roll onto the ranch and. You know, they they argue with me. I'm like, hey, you know, this is private property. No, it's part of the state park. No, no. Yeah, because you're right. You, you're, you're lo- so when you My, drive yeah, up they, they, the drive border the state park or like two road. sides. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. It's, it's really crazy to see the difference between like what it takes to manage a forest and then what like, you know, the, what well, when you have like, I mean, you got your private land, which only you manage, and right. then you have the national forest right. to the right, which is paid to, to be managed. And you, you go, well, it's paid to be mismanaged. Well, right, <laughs> yeah, but it's like it's at least like it is cl- it's cleared, and they have done some work. And like, and you know, you look onto your side of the property on just the road, and you're like, dude, that's got a lot. Of, that's got to be a lot of work for you know a family to take care of. It's like painting the Golden Gate Bridge, right? I go in there and masticate, clear an acre, and try to work across, and, and it's back the, the next by day. The, by the time you get back to the other side, you got to go back and start again. And how do you manage the poison oak? I don't. It doesn't affect me, so I don't, oh, I don't worry so about lucky. it. <laughs> Damn. 
I, I'm immune. My, I'm immune. Casey's immune. De- it, Deb, Deb gets it off my clothes. Yeah, so, I get and it she gets it like bad. Ugh. Yeah. Well, all right. So we well, got uh, the twenty, the twenty fourth through the twenty sixth is the no twenty sixth to twenty eighth. Twenty damn it, twenty sixth to twenty eighth. Yeah, Keep, don't ask me. I just, yeah. I just they just tell me where to show up and I show up. <laughs> yeah. Friday through Saturday or Friday through Sunday. Uh, what does Friday look like? Friday is so always Friday, like the big party, so right? Friday's practice, and then we do what we call the throwdown on Friday night. Um, bring out a bunch of food trucks, taco truck, lobster truck. Um, you know, they're like I said. I think we're gonna have some live music this year. It's either Friday or Saturday night. We're kind of a, we run a loose program. Okay. You know, just yeah. whatever feels right. Right. Um, you know, I mean, that's kind of one of our trademarks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I, going back to the origins of it, it, we you know it was eighteen guys getting drunk in the woods, and we we tried to keep that vibe. Yeah. You know, um, it, we don't get to, you know we it's a party where a mountain bike race broke out. Um, yeah, you know, it's yeah, seven, <laughs> it's exactly what it is, and it feels like that. It's se- it's still. Se- it's seventy thirty, it's seventy percent party, thirty percent mountain bike race. Yes, um, it's awesome. It's but it's turned into kind of a almost like a family reunion for us. Um, it's you know, it's the people. What do you want to do in life? You want to hang out with the people you love, right? Yeah. And and it's an opportunity to hang out with the people you love, and and so it's really not anything more than that. And the industry has gotten behind it big time. I mean, our partner specialized in Evil Bicycle Company transition. Um, WTB, well, like I said, one of the OGs. Mm-hmm. Um, Fast House. Fast House came on about four years ago. You want to talk about a group of guys that gets it? Yeah. Uh, you know, Kenny and, and Keegan and the Fast House crew. Those guys get it. I mean, we went down to Day in the Dirt two years ago and actually raced. I hadn't been, I hadn't been between the tape on a moto in 30 years, in a long time. Oh, you raced, huh? Yeah, I went down and raced and, and f- f- remembered how much fun it was to have that adrenaline rush. And it got my ass kicked. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I... You know, I had no idea those guys. Those guys go really, really fast. You <laughs> yeah. know, and, I, and I'm a woods guy, right? I'm not. I haven't been on a motor course in forever, and it's a Glen Helen, and and it's a you know, it's a G, they call it a GP course, but it's a motor course, and that's not really my jam anymore. Yeah, um, those you got to huck those jumps to get around the course. Yeah, I'm not, you know, and, and I'll huck it still, but I mean, I, I pick my spots. Yeah, you know, that's crazy. But uh, um, but the fast house guys, like I said, they 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 brought you know they're kind of their the you know when rules were few is one of their sayings right and so they totally get what we do yeah right and um like i said as as a partner goes you know the people at wtb i cannot say enough about those guys from from day one mm-hmm. and, and again they, you know it was some tires and some you know it was such a small little intimate event when we did it the first time and and you know like i said specialized um you know it's, it's funny story when when specialized approached me about becoming a partner you know, Specialized kind of had this unfounded kind of like stigma around them a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think you guys are a good fit. Right? Yeah, because they're, I mean, a very corporate. Very corporate, very buttoned down. Um, and they should be. They're Specialized. Yeah, it's a, right? I mean, they've been around for and long, 70s. I could not have been more wrong about the group at Specialized. That's um, awesome. That is cool. They're freaking awesome people. That's great to hear. Um, you know, and the way they run their program, um, and like I said, you know, uh, just incredible the people you know jared kessler and, and and the people that we've got to work with over the years at specialized um they're incredible i think special i think they're going to do their worldwide launch of the stump jumper at the ranch this year oh man they're going to bring in worldwide that's right? a huge sponsorship ron yeah. that's like i mean to get people like you know fast house and you have 805 too or is that 805 like, is our beer partner i now? mean that's, that's <laughs> but that is, that's huge like that this is, is like but you, you guys know. heard it you guys heard it specialized are cool yeah and uh <laughs> make good bikes as well. they make they make amazing bikes and and like i said some of the smaller brands you ride specialized i do yeah yeah they make it they're, they're incredible bikes um you know special uh evil bicycle companies jason moshler who worked at wtb mm-hmm. um so jason is the cfo for evil bicycles now okay and so nice. evil and they're a bit of a, bo- a boutique brand but they build amazing bikes mm-hmm. and and like i said they're down with the cause they they get what we do they show up they go hard you know every year we do what's called the spirit uh, spirit award winner and that's the, the guy that can go hard like till three o'clock in the morning, then get up and get on his bike and go race for the, for the next day, and then go hard again. So you know, Mark Weir was the original Spirit Award winner, and then that's so cool that you know you guys Aaron, have Bradford that and, and <laughs> Aaron Bradford and uh, Ryan you know, Re- Ryan Beamish from Semper Fi was a, a recent award winner for the. He goes hard. You know, guys are showing up for that. Yeah, no, they, it's I'm telling you, dude. Guys, people really, they're like, I'm going a, for that award. Yeah, that's the goal. I got one race that I really need to accomplish, and that's the TDS. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, these Spirit. guys and, and these guys are coming from all over the world. Like, how warrior. do you get those? 
I mean, was it just an like accumulation? So we've got, through we've got the Garrick twins coming in from Germany this year. Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, two sisters, and and you know they've raced EWS forever, so they're they're coming. In. It's just becomes you know Mick Hanna from Australia won the e bike division the last two years in a row. Mick is a legend in the mountain bike community, multi time uh, UCI uh, uh, World Cup downhill winner. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and just unbelievably fast on a bike. You know, Jerome Clements has been here. Um, uh, God, who else? Um, Curtis Keene, uh, who were actually works for Specialized now, we call him Captain America. Okay. And Curtis was a really buttoned down guy, right? He yeah. is, you know, just incredible shape. And, and so when I, we had the year he came, we had him doing keg stands on Sunday. Yeah. I'm like, okay, my mission, my work here is done. Yeah. <laughs> we got him. Did you, and now, um, the mustache is that just something that is that like a well, so, an iconic thing that you've so, always had? So, so the logo, you know, it's Buddy Newman did, did the logo, and uh-huh. so the the mustache just kind of happened where we all, you know, everyone kind of grows in their, their stash for TDS, right? Yeah, and so um, it's just kind of you know every year you see you like a hundred of them everywhere, like everybody who can grow a mustache like cuts it for this yep. race. Yep. <laughs> it's so, I mean, so cool. It's a good it, style. Yeah. It is, yeah. You know, so about <laughs> mid March or so, you know, normally I kind of run a little goatee, and I'm like, okay, start shaving this and get the get yeah. the stash to come in. So Hell yeah, that's, awesome. so. <laughs> that's cool, man. But Ron, uh, yeah, all the the respect to you for uh, using your own property and uh, putting something like this together, you know, and and so many people are loving it. You're bringing so many people together I, I, on your property. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it, it, I got to give credit where credit is due. Look, I, I'm a guy that can run a tractor a little bit, right? But still, that's got to you know, feel I amazing. Mean, Specialized in, in uh, 805, 805 and, and <laughs> fast and, house. But that's yeah. you know, Justin knows my wife Debbie, and that's interconnectivity. That's some real. You, the bottom line is, if it was not, <laughs> we call her little Debs. Um, if it was for Lil Debs, it'd just be a shit show, dude. She's uh, she's that's the mom. part of the team, yeah. though. That, yeah. that came in line you know, too. My, the my, family you know, is my daughter. You know, uh, she's amazing, and, and she handles all the Semper Fi stuff. And you know, my my Casey was kind of the ops guy. You know, and mm-hmm. he'll be back next year, right? And but he's the guy that I don't have time to do it all. Like I said, it takes a community and and the the the, the team of all uh, medical staff, the the medical team we have there on the hill. Every day when there, there's spikes on the hill, we have four MDs. Okay, and probably a nurse practitioner, a couple ER nurses, the medical team. You couldn't, you could go to a UCI event tomorrow and not find a better medical team. Nice. Um, and again, it's not. We don't pay them to do that. It's they want to be a part of it. Um, Dr. Pritchett, uh, Pritchett Brashear Medicine um, up in Grass Valley. JP, he's a mountain bike rider. Um, you know, he's into it. Jed Colvin, he's a nurse practitioner. He, he spends more time at the ranch than I do. I mean, that guy's out there riding all the time. That's so and cool. We recently discovered E-Motos. Uh-huh. Okay, so the E-Motos at the Wait, ranch. The, an E-Moto? What is that? It's a, electric, like the, mo- the, the motorbike. Electric, it looks like the mo- mo- electric, motorcycle. but it's Electric motorcycles. Yeah, okay. okay. The, the, the Saurons. Saurons, exactly. So, um, so <laughs> Sauron like uh, Middle Earth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, we, I pronounce uh, it wrong. <laughs> yeah, so they're called Saurons. Saurons. And, and we started, you know, and we ride our regular motors out there all the time, too. Um, but the cool thing about the Saurons is the ranch is kind of built for it. Right. I mean, because, you know, even though it's I have, you know, Jeff Hansen, my neighbor, he kind of lets us do what we want on 120 acres of his as long as, you know, we're respectful. He's super cool, dude. Hansen Brothers. Oh, yeah. Yes, I do I, remember you cutting lines to f- like yeah, in 2019. Jeff, Jeff is just, just the best guy. Mm-hmm. Just the best guy. I mean, and look, at the end of the day, he's a businessman. And, and at some point it probably goes away. At some point, somebody probably makes me an offer that I can't refuse mm-hmm. because where else are you going to find 230 acres with those views? Literally. The city of Grass Valley City Limit now is now my property line. Wow. To the south. Wow. Wow. Because they just annexed all that in. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's, it'll it's have a life like everything else has a life. True. But, it, you know, as long as it's a good time, um, we're going to keep doing it just because we, we get as, we get more out of it than I think the people that come and do it. Yeah. But that's, that's what makes it really cool is uh, all these people are down for the cause. And um, uh, I try to uh, – I try to create that and, and get those type of wheels moving in a Muay Thai world. Right. And, and uh, you can do more together. And, and um, that's what it's about. It's like uh, you can do so much uh, by bringing the community together. And then uh, uh, you're doing that. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you talk, we're talking about, you know, having, you know, having your buds, right? Having your bros. Yeah. Right. 
and Rogan talked about it. He, you know, about, about how men, lead, you know, a lot of men lead this quiet life of desperation, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and whether it's bikes, whether it's mixed martial arts, Muay Thai, whatever it is, right? You, you know, I mean, and I'm not talking just about the male population. I'm talking about everybody. Everybody's got to have a passion, right? Because the world we live in right now, look, it'll suck you in, and you'll you'll sit there and stare at a screen and be depressed and weigh 400 freaking pounds, right? And and you you know, and then one day the light goes off and you and you can't figure out how it all went wrong, right? And you know, get involved, get out there, you know, be be, be a part of some community, right? Whether it's mountain bikes, whether it's road bikes, whether it's the uh, you know, uh, combat sports, whatever the case may be, right? You just got to find your jam, and uh, you know, I mean. Look, it could be yard sailing. I, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just something where you've got a, c- a connected group of people. Because at the end of the day, you know, life is short, and y- you'd better have some people that you can count on, it's some go-to people. Or, or you know, life's hard enough as it is, and without that, it's even harder. Yeah, that's well said. Very, very well said. How do you uh, how do you keep people off your ranch? Because I know it's 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 always kind of funny to see. I tell them that I know Muay Thai. Yeah, <laughs> it's always funny to see like a I'll like sl- get on Instagram and it'll be like, "Caught ya, motherfucker! You're banned from the ranch." And it'll be like these two guys in a fucking trail cam, like riding their bikes, and they like know who they are, and they like we took we well, you're banned now. We know who the fuck you are. We've seen you before or whatever. And like so because you have to. It's like not too far off of the main road and everybody obviously knows about it because they go to the you know so every year we, we try to be as egalitarian as we can be if you put in your time you get stickers for your bike or for your helmet you get two stickers you put in two work days uh-huh and the, and when the ranch is open you can ride the ranch okay it's, it's so it's just, awesome it's I, don't, I don't take it i mean look i just give me just be be part of the community yeah it's it's no more complicated than that that's so cool okay? yeah um there are put some time in on the on the trails and you can ride the trails you know to have nice things you got to put in the time amen you know you hear that kids <laughs> that's, only, that's only fair. It so, is, yeah, right. So, how do I keep my? I mean, when I first bought it, it was kind of a shit show. I mean, it was lots of confrontations, like you know, almost you know. Throwing and it. the Sanchez's aren't push arounds, that you know, like, you're not gonna get like the hey, I just want to let you know. Well, <laughs> like I tell you know, when I tell people if I caught him out there, it's, you're lucky my kid didn't catch out here. Yeah, he, dude, he's way more aggro than I am, <laughs> and that's <laughs> that's crazy to think, dude. Um, but. Uh, it, it, over the years, you know, I think we've probably fostered an understanding, some respect. Um, the recent migration from the Bay Area has presented a set of problems. Yeah, um, all the Stravas. And uh, the trail world. runners. Um, oh. Yeah, the trail runners. Um, they're, wow, how they're, funny. Yeah, he'd, yeah, They're kind of a thing, and they'll, they'll argue with you. Like, oh, no. They'll run the trails on your own. Oh, ranch yeah, they'll run the trails, and then they'll tell you that you don't own it, that the water company owns it, or oh, that it's part, it's part of the state park. And I'm like, yeah, the state park's so cool. They let me hang motorcycles in the tree here. Yeah, right. No shit. But we got a bunch of dirt, old dirt bikes hanging from the trees. Oh, yeah, when you drive in, there's just like shit. It, it's we, call, we call it yard art. <laughs> It's shit everywhere, dude. There's even shit all over the trees down the trails. Oh yeah, yeah. We uh, <laughs> we'd be like, this is private property. Yeah, we should go. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know yeah. what this is, but yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah. So uh, w- one of the because uh, I have neighbors, right? I, they, they, they high dollar house neighbors, and for the most part, all my neighbors, all, really all my neighbors, are pretty cool, right? They they get it. They understand that. Yeah, we do some stuff out there, but for the most part, they got this. You know, 350, 400 acre backyard. Yeah, that's you quiet. Know, like it's quiet most of the year. Ninety five percent of the time. Yeah. Right. So they're totally chill. And one of my neighbors is is selling his house. Him and his wife moved down to South County, and and they some people came out. The real estate sign went in the ground, and some people came out to look at it. And I was down the hill in the excavator, mm-hmm. but Mark Weir and that and Weir is. Dude, I gotta. You gotta. You want to get somebody funny on your podcast? Get weird on your podcast. Yeah, he's he's he a will he will freaking ruin you. <laughs> okay, so Weir's up there with all the RC car nerds, right? Working on the RC car track. Yes, this is yesterday. Okay. And so these people go look at the house, and they 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 find out you know the ranch and you know we do things, and so they roll up there because the gate's open. Uh huh. And they, they were just looking around to see, you know, and uh, to see what was going on. And so they pull up, and there's all these guys with RC car. Our, on, we have an RC car track, okay? And we got a mini motor track, and then we've got an enduro motocross track, moto loop. We have we shifter car track is the only thing I haven't built yet. That's coming, okay? And pretty much anything with a motor that's not we're, a we're, car. We're down. Yeah. And so um, they roll up, and they get out of the car, and this lady's like, well, she says, well, you know, how often do, is it like this out here? You know, is, is it quiet? And, and you know, we're in classic weird style goes, 
lady, you're asking all the wrong questions. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. She just, what was her reaction? Uh, she was uh, a little, uh, as he said, you know, he didn't know her well, but he, he definitely thought she was a Karen. Okay? Yeah. And, and he was like, you know, look, there could be 5,000 people out here. We don't know. We don't invite them. They just show up. And he's, and he's, so now he's just fucking with it. Right. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the people that saw this encounter with Weir and this lady, was, they were just, they were laughing, laughing. so freaking hard. Did anybody get it like a, a shot of it he's from like, the trees? He's like, hey, if, you, if you're into motorcycles, bicycles, and guns, <laughs> this is your place. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Someone's going to buy that property and be real happy, though. No, seriously, you the could right really person? have the yeah. right yeah. neighbor. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, yeah. the right person. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it's heaven. Yeah. It doesn't get any better than that. They're like the TDS I mean, it's happens just right next in door. General, but like, all, I mean, but all my neighbors, be... all my neighbors, Friday night at the Throwdown, they all come over and drink beer and hang out because yeah, it's a it's, it's a, a fun party. They have a good time. It's a good I mean, place it, to be. You know, one of our neighbors, we 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 keep the uh, 805. We we put it in uh, carts to keep it cold. We park it down at his at his house. He brings it up for us because we don't have power. Right? We all we have is generated power. So teamwork. It's yeah. wild. It's awesome. That's awesome, man. Well, I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm definitely going to be there. I'm going to bring my kid and bring the team up. Come on up. up. Come on up. Yep. I'm looking forward to it. Yep. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. So you, you know, we'll try to give you guys the VIP and put you in a, in a side-by-side so you guys can get around. That'd that be awesome. would be awesome. Yeah. That would be. We'll, we, we'll probably have a couple laying around. All right. So. Hell yeah. Come on up. Cool. Sounds good. Well, right on, Ron. Thanks for coming. Hey, and, thanks uh, for having me, guys. Appreciate yeah, it's it. It's been a pleasure. It's uh, entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to the TDS, and uh, thanks for coming. And yeah, man, it's good. Uh, it, it's good meeting Brother. you, and you know, having you as a friend, man. It's been a. It was a wild little like connection that we had there, and yeah, now I mean, here yeah, we are, like on a podcast. See, you you know, few yourself, years later. You didn't do yourself justice. I mean, th- th- this guy actually built the barbecue. It was a Carolina barbecue, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Here, bring up a uh, yeah. I, I I queued it up just in case we were talking about it, so I can show off a little bit. But yeah, this. So I, I built a Carolina style pit with the help of all of us. Like it was a. They were like, okay, what do you need? There was like everybody was just all hands on deck, and I said, I need. Yeah, the local concrete guy Barry totally helped you out. Remember? Yeah, no, it was, and then uh, four by four labs. Luke uh, yeah, brought. Yeah, we got. Yeah. We went over there and bit, got the big old those uh, huge. Well, we were using plywood for a minute, and then uh, he brought over some metal plates. Uh, so it helped keep the insulation in So more. what's going on? What are we doing here? Is this barbecue? Yeah. So this is a Carolina-style uh, pig. I filleted it open. Um, I cooked it with direct coals. So I had a burn barrel that, um, you know, we just had all the guys just brought over a bunch of wood, and I just kept chucking it in there, and I'd shovel the coals underneath the pig on the hams and the uh, shoulders. And then here I'm mopping the pig with um, some a vinegar apple cider mix with uh, red pepper, black pepper, and some um, – garlic and salt and stuff like that so but yeah and then on the other side uh, of it was the um the briskets i had like 10 to 15 briskets or something like that so uh-huh. i did pulled pork um uh, brisket we did um some chicken and uh the sides were like a rajas con queso which was a, a, a roasted poblano pepper with um queso oaxaca and um uh, some corn and stirred in with some some heavy cream so it was like a good vegetarian dish um but yeah it was uh there's me there's the burn barrel right there so that that's just uh you know that was i was up all night oh no it was all nighter all night like i didn't i like i'd sleep for like 20 minutes and because every 20 minutes i had to re shut i had to put some coals underneath the pig um or and if i didn't we weren't going to be eaten so yeah it was and it all came out huh it all came out it was unbelievable yeah look at so good look at the there's another photo of like the uh, of the line look how fat i was back then i was almost 200 you look different in the face yeah i'm just i'm fat (laughs) so much fat yeah that one there that one with everybody in line so that's us the whole little spread there and yeah we served about 250 300 people there Mm -hmm. no it was you, you killed it. I mean, it, like I man. said, they built the barbecue and everything. It was so impressive. I was really passionate about barbecue. That was um, when I, w- I was, like, doing it as, like, competition barbecue and just kind of like a hobbyist. And then um, we had the Old Republic had the restaurant that was going under because they had this, like, five-star dining experience that they wanted to do that just That was a bad idea. It totally <laughs> failed. <laughs> I love you, Jim. Love you, Simon. But that was not good. Um, so then we turned it into a um, a barbecue restaurant, and they got me an old hickory pit, um, and I just started like whipping up killer barbecue. And if it wasn't for being in that oh, it was fucking so, it forest, was so good, too. dude. It was. But you were you guys were. Ki- I mean, once they kind of figured out the menu, yeah. and got their shit together. Yep. 
Um, I mean, and I love Jim and Simon. I mean, I love them to death. Yeah. That was a bad idea. Great people, but bad idea. <laughs> bad idea. <laughs> it was just a flood of money. Man, even the uh, and the people that they did it with, those cocksucker bacon, the dude that we that they had. Oh, that dude was that dude, that dude was, was such a prick. Dude, oh, I hope was, you fucking hear this. Like, oh no, he was such. A, remember, <laughs> remember when he was he wanted Simon to drop like twelve bucks a tile for the bar back? Yes, oh, everything was like that. They'd be like, oh, we need like the special yeast from Afghanistan for our non bread or whatever, and it's like. <laughs> did they ever tell like, you the uh, the wedge salad story? No. It was his wife, right? Uh-huh, and, right, and yeah. Jim wanted a freaking wedge salad on the menu. Yes, I do remember. remember okay. this story? Ka- yeah, and they were like, we can't no, possibly th- put a wedge we salad. We are not doing a wedge salad. And so Jim went down into town and bought a bunch of iceberg and whatever else, you know, bacon and shit. And they served a fucking wedge and, salad. And he brought it back up there. And like, we are fucking doing wedge salad. I bet you it was the most popular dish on the on the menu that day because that's what people wanted. It was a roadhouse. Well, I mean, it's a roadhouse, and it's next to a mountain biking hub. So you do really good burgers, really yep. good barbecue, really good atmosphere. You got it dialed. Totally. And the and the barbecue, it, it did work. It was it was good. It was going well. But unfortunately, those those fires and those shutoffs, they, you know, we lost like two refrigerators full of food. It was just. Uh, Remember when you guys brought my uh, generator up there? Oh yeah. The one in the horse trailer. Yes. That's the one we call trigger. Okay. That's another fixture at the ranch. We have a generator. I put it in a horse trailer. It's so cool. It's like literally looks like a horse trailer, but it, oh, I mean, it's a single horse. Double, horse, Double trailer horse trailer with a generator in it. It's just fucking MacGyver. They, these guys are real rednecks. <laughs> Tools of the trade. It yeah. works. But this guy, he has some bonfires at his uh, property, and yeah, I had his chicken wings before. And uh, oh, the man can cook. Yeah, the I'm man just can like, cook. Wow, and he's just throwing it together. Oh, I just yeah. yeah. Well, this. I have this massive flame going. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, cool. Thanks again, Ron. Hey, yeah, thanks, thanks, Ron. thanks, guys. Enjoyed it. Yeah. Cheers. All right.